Welcome to another High Level Conversations. What you think is real is based on a construct. This is like a whole video game. Many people are stuck in the darkness. They don't know how to control the frequency and the vibration in their own energy. Sometimes you need to go through hell to get to heaven. Dark times come before the success. We are cosmic beings. We are not from here. God is in the details of that why. Why was it done? There's no difference between you and I. I evolved, I upgraded. Everything comes from darkness. That shows you the real power of reality. It's an illusion. I appreciate my pops for teaching me how to be a god. From a boy to a man and ultimately back into the natural state of being into a god. Be as God's supposed to always move with that higher self. And I had to be able to execute it. Having knowledge is not power, the execution of knowledge is power. Knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Because the only real knowledge you can get is knowledge of self. The frequency of the planet Earth is in disarray. There's disruptions every single where. As we've seen with Idra 3000, you know, 12 minute um, composition of music and the frequency that he gave, you know, to the planet, the people needed that healing. They needed that cleansing. It was no words. It was just all frequencies and vibrations. And it was a sound that could be utilized over and over. Sound that could be utilized as medicine. Medicine for the broken heart. Medicine for the broken mind. Medicine for the broken spirit. Thought is infinite. It never dies because thought is an energy. It finds place to travel. When we have lower thoughts, those thoughts travel sometimes deep into our body and they get stuck. And then those thoughts that get stuck can leave us with trauma and you can be unhealed. And it's not until you cleanse your body right from those parasitic things that continues to be acidic in the body, which are the unhealed thoughts, things that you haven't got over. Right. You're supposed to go through darkness and pass through it. Take the lessons from the womb of the darkness and allow it to grow you so that you prepare for the light once again. Many people are not in that stage where they're walking in their light. Many people are stuck in the darkness. They don't know how to control the frequency and the vibration in their own energy. They don't know how to utilize the music as medicine because most of the music isn't. When music is corrupted to turn into a business so that it can control the rhythm of your heart, the rhythm of your spirit, it's not supposed to be a mechanism of control. It's supposed to be a mechanism that becomes medicine, that allows you to elevate in these trans light states to shake off the parasites that may exist within your body, to allow you to flow through the darkness and reach higher zens of light. Today, I'm talking to a medicine man. I'm talking to a neuro linguistic chief. I'm talking to a technological spiritualist. I'm talking to a, a Baba or in the street linguistic terms, a OG. <laughs> um, I am very uh, excited anytime I get to sit with elders. Elders are not just people who have reached an old age. They're people who have become mages and sages. There are people who become magis. They are there are ones who can guide us into new frontiers and higher thoughts exist in planes beyond what the world is trying to give to you and the frequencies that they're trying to get you to operate on. But allow us to exist in higher purpose because they can guide us through places that we're going to go through and to places that they have now reached so that we can start to exist and excel in our zenith of potential so that we live at the highest level of our goals and success in our life and we can walk around with glows admitting the highest power on the planet earth there was a 2009 study by japanese scientists that showed that we have bioluminescent lights that we actually glow 
And they said during some of these times, it was usually in the late afternoons and it started to decrease during nighttime. Now, nurses have reported to seeing this in patients that are dying because you emit more light when you're dying, trying to heal yourself. Right. Sometimes you see a woman that is pregnant and she has that what we call glow. Now, that glow a lot of time is below the spectrum of the eyesight, but we still see it sometimes. We still feel it. The presence is still there. You see somebody glowing and their skin almost looks like it's orange, like there's a sun inside them. That's that God glow. Right. Being able to tap into that God glow, you can operate at a high spiritual zenith. Not something that you get from just talking about the law of attraction, but something that you live through magnetic attraction by increasing your electricity within your body so that you can tap into the higher frequencies. It is, inshallah, what we'll be able to tap in today with the good brother, Dr. D. Sirius. What's happening, brother? Man, I'm going to take the glasses off early, brother. <laughs> We're going to get started, man. It's yes, a blessing yes. to have you here, brother. It's an honor to be here with you. Yes, sir. So first I want to talk about time. Yes. You know, I came up with an analogy. Age is just achievement, growth, and experience. Right? So there are many people who get to new ages, right? But they don't have any new experiences, they don't have any new knowledge. They don't have any growth, no acceleration, no achievement, right? Nothing to actually mark that you're moving forward in life or upward in life, right? And I say a new age because our old age is something we come from, Yes. right? When I was 19 years old, I've experienced that before. I don't want to go back to that old age. Mm -hmm. I couldn't call it new, right? So the forward thinking is when I go to a new age, I have new achievement. I have new growth in life. I have new experience. Now I've reached another level, right? But you should be able to reach new levels from a holistic standpoint, not just financial, right? But what about physical and spiritual and metaphysical? How does one go into new light ages and get to like, if, if, if we can, like, you know, a higher spiritual age of light? How do you, how do you wake up and you live with a glow? First of all, if you look at time, we know that time is relative mm. and time is based on what you perceive, how you feel about it. And there are things that are programmed in your mindset based on the way you were trained that tell you what time is, mm. what distance is, what color is, what taste is, what good is, what bad is. When you take time and you realize that it's moving. And a lot of people say. You know, I don't, and it's not enough time. Mm. They got another group of people who, don't, you know, it's too much time on their hands. Time really becomes powerful when you turn time backwards. Mm. Emit. You talked about light, bioluminescence, that glow. When you begin to glow and use your time to be like the lighthouse. See, the lighthouse isn't waiting to blink when a ship is on the ocean. Mm -hmm. It's constantly sending out that Morse code. That beacon. You see what I'm saying? Constantly, no matter what. When you are constantly sending out that light code, no matter what, no matter what anybody says, then you are using time to work with you. You're bending time. You're bending light. You're bending the frequency. You're bending sound. So now you are of sound mind and body mm. because you are using time to glow, to emit, mm. to do work, to have action instead of waiting for stuff to happen. Sound, mind, and body. And it's funny because as you say that, because the body is a sound. Yes. Right? We all emit a certain frequency of sound, right? You can plug somebody up and you're going to get a particular frequency. Yes. You know, death has a frequency. Yes. Right? High vibratory energy has a frequency. Sickness has a frequency. Medicine has a frequency. Right. So when I think about light, light, of course, is energy and thought is light. Right. Yes. So many can be enlightened. And when you see some people, it looks like they're in a darkened state. And it's not that darkness is not negative. Right. Mm -hmm. Darkness is a state of existence, but it has a purpose. Yes. Right. Darkness is a very powerful thing because in darkness is where creation happens. 
right? So when you're going through dark times, you go through transformative times, Yes, right? And those times can make you higher than people around you going through good times or light times. Yes. You know, they say times were light back then. Yes. But when people really become who they are is in the times when they were dark. Yes. So this planet Earth went through a dark age. Yes. Right. And it's it's funny because would you regard this to be a dark age or a light age today? Depends on your perspective. Mm. Because someone would say this is the worst time ever on the planet. Mm. Some would say this is the best time. Right. So let's say you get in you you get into music now. And we're talking about, you know, I'm from the old school music world. Yeah. Where we say, man, that was the bomb. It was really happening. Music is not happening now. Imagine somebody today just got a guitar or a piano. They're young and they're learning their first music and they're watching some of the old jazz folks and some of the music and the hip hop heads that are out now. They're right. This is the incredible. This is the most amazing time. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So dark mm. and light is a perspective. Everything comes from darkness. See that D you see that D is a foundation, A, B, C, D. That's a four. Mm-hmm. Once you have that foundation, you can build upon that. You see what I'm saying? So you got the arc. It's arc. This whole thing is an orchestra. It's an orchestra. It's all music. It's all tones. You can't have high without low. Mm. You High stands upon low. Mm. You can't have dark without light. You can't have up without down. It's how you use the spectrum. You see, if I just play the piano, I just play high notes all day, man, you'll lose your mind. Yeah. Ain't no bass. Yeah. Ain't no, ain't no bass drum. Ain't no, ain't no beat. So you need the rhythm to stand on. Mm-hmm. You need something that can hold that groove. Yeah. Now you can put the light or the high on top of it. So it's how you use it. It's how you spread it. It's what you do with the music. Mm. The first music note used to be called Ura. Mm. It wasn't, you know how they have Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti? It used to be Ura or mm. Aura. It was the black feminine note, which all music came out of. All music notes were born out of her, the dark matter. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. They got rid of her and they put Do. Do in Latin is money because the whole scale is based on Latin. So Do is at the beginning of the scale. Do is at the end of the scale. So now cash rules everything around me. Mm. Now we got a new problem. Because now you're not even being an artist totally. You're mimicking and doing whatever you need to do to make that money, Mm. to create the booty. You see what I'm saying? So you will sell yourself. You can't, this thing about selling your soul, I'm not into that because you can't sell your soul. The soul is everything. You might be able to sell your personality, sell your freeness, sell sell your voice. They lease it. (laughs) You lease it out. But you know what I'm saying? It's not for sale. Yeah. It's an illusion. When you choose to be an artist, then it's not about the money. It's about you and your expression, being able to express your vibration. The true expression of life is improvisation. Mm. When you are ready to every single day create balance through improvisation, looking at what's happening in the cosmos and creating change and shifting. You see, now you're becoming free. Now, if you're, you wake up and you have this, I am this and I'm that, and your, your ego is hard and you, you, you take everything for granted that it's going to be this way and that way, you start losing it because now you can be bought easily. Mm. They sell you something. They tell you something's going to happen. Then they show it to you. Mm-hmm. So now you got cognitive dissonance. They tell you there's a war somewhere. Well, somewhere else, there's no war. How come that ain't on the news? Can we talk about that? Right. Where there's no war? Right. Where there's people eating banana. You see what I'm saying? Eating guavas, living off the land, drinking water with mm. fresh water and, and the salt water come together where there's magic. That's the magi. The magi does not wait for something to happen or let things happen to them. They realize everything is happening for them and from them. When you get that, then you say, oh, we need the light. We need the dark. We need it all. Sometimes you need to go through hell to get to heaven. Mm-hmm. If you if you're just living and you don't realize where heaven is and where hell is, where are you at? People could tell you anything. So now you're under control. So now you're a slave and all your light is going through a prism. Mm-hmm. When your light goes through a prism, it breaks it up. It's a prison. You see what I'm saying? You don't realize sometimes that you're the warden. You're the prosecutor. You're the judge. You're the jailer. You're the warden in your own prison until you break free. Mm. And that means to express yourself. The trees, the plants are always expressing themselves. They never stop. The ants. I mean, these are some of the most organized beings on the planet. Ants and bees. They're always expressing themselves no matter what's happening. So it's that expression. 
And it's that realizing that, you know, true creativity and consciousness is about being totally aware that the cosmos is shifting every single day. And if you can ride that wave, like Dick Gregory told me, he says, man, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Mm. That blew my mind when I really looked at that. It is. So it's about your flow, your river, your ocean, your life, your earth, and being aware of other people around you and being aware that everybody's not at the same stage you're at. That's love. Mm. I love that. Pun intended. It's like, you know, it, it had me thinking you can only have two ages in life, a dark age and a light age. Mm. And it's the perspective upon that cycle that you just went through, whether this was a dark age or a light age. Right. So, you know, when you're going through dark times, those are times that are growing you. You're learning the lessons. Mm -hmm. Right. You are in a stage of development. You are in a cocoon and you're supposed to break out of that, then become right. You go through a phoenix era. Right. And then sometimes you are enjoying just enjoying all the fruits of labor of who yes. you become and how you are able to excel and all of the goodness that comes from the fruits of your labor. Right. The fruits yes. of the labor, literally the pain. Anytime you speak about labor, is you talking about pain. Right. It is a laborer's job to become right. Success is the achievement of a goal. Right. Those are light times. But dark times come before the success because mm -hmm. that's where all the labor is. Right. So I can look at different points in time in my life and be like, those are dark times. These were light times. Right. And you have to appreciate both because one doesn't come without the other. Mm -hmm. Light is attracted to dark. Yes. Just as much as dark is attracted to light. Yes. We look out in space all the time and you see dark holes attract the light. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's not the other way around. Dark holes don't move towards the sun. That's right. Right. Those gravitational fields, everything is pulled in the darkness. That shows you the real power of reality is darkness, not light. Yes. Right. And in that sense. So and, and, and it's like I want people to get this transmutational thought process in their mind that the, the, the power of your experience and what you're going through. Right. It's supposed to be preparing you for what's next. But yes. when you're stuck in being emotional about what you're going through versus what is preparing you for, you're missing the lessons of the becoming. Yes. Right. It's like you you see a man. And, and, and here's the thing. It's like some people have lost loved ones. They they've they they've lost their wives and daughters and they went through the worst tragedy. And then after that, they gain one of the greatest perspectives. Right. I was listening to a. Uh, um, a show called Yellow Park, Yellowstone rather. And this Native American woman had lost her daughter and the cowboy came and comforted her. He was like, you know what? I never told nobody this, but essentially I've been through the same dark time. You know, we lost a, um, we lost a son. And he was like, but one thing that I learned, he said, this old wise man had told him, he said, don't look at it that way. You say you have to look at it as they was alive for two days and they lived a perfect life. See, they didn't they don't know anything about loss. They don't know anything about pain. All they knew was that their parents loved them. They had two days of living a complete and perfect life. Our expectations of what we want don't really matter in the cycle of time. It is what happens and it is what doesn't happen. Yes. It is the will that we have to make things flow in the direction that we wish they would. And then it's the acceptance of what happens from what we can't control. Yes. Yes. Right. And being and having to understand that you are a steward in a world where you can operate your body, you can operate your will, but you can't dominate things you can't dominate yes. until you allow yourself to become a more powerful force in the world. Yeah. And so the sum total of our thoughts and our ideas is the reality that we live. Yes. And we have to accept that until we are ready to reject that and push against it and create a different time for ourselves. Yeah. So it's like if you're going through a, a grievance period, you know, for someone you have. Listen, that was always going to be their life, whether they died at five or 19 or 30 or 100. You have to stop and accept the period of time that they live to celebrate and don't die while you're living. Right. Because how would that person feel about seeing you mourn? Right. You have to continue to appreciate because you can be a beacon to increase the light of somebody else while you're living. Parents who have a child that lost, they end up grieving so much of that child loss. Right. That they treat the child that's living like they did. They ignore them. No longer giving them light. No longer giving them love. No longer giving them energy. 
Right. So people have to learn sometimes how to even mourn their past selves. Right. Friends don't know how to do that. Yo, yo, listen, you changed on me. Yeah, no, I didn't change on you. I changed for me. I evolved. I upgraded. You have to mourn the friend you used to know and get used to this updated version. Right. I don't like the things that I used to. I'm not involved in the things that I used to. This is who I am. Now, let's decide if we can still be friends if we are in alignment. Maybe you may have to grow, come back and down. We cool. Yes. Right. But the problem is, is that we don't want to have those mourning periods to where we learn how to mourn our own self, get over that and move forward. I'm no longer that person. I have people in my family, schizophrenic, bipolar. I have to mourn who they used to be. Right. And accept who they are. And we can only move forward. I can't take you back in the past and say, you know, uh, 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 capture that avatar and that spirit that you used to have and be that. No, pick up the pieces from where you at. Now move forward in time. You know, and death in life is a perspective, too, because you can't create energy. You can't destroy it. See, that's our construct that somebody died because they're not here with us. Mm -hmm. Their energy now is going to a different grade, a different level, a different right. high level. Yeah. You see? And when we realize that this thing between dark and light, in between there's something called the seam, like the fabric. When you sew that fabric, mm. that seam is tighter than the whole fabric. You see, it's where the dark and the light come together. The yin and the yang, where they come together is the most beautiful time. That is the middle. That's the wave. That's when you, you're you in the threshold where mm. both energies are happening at the same time. And if you stay too much in the mourning or in the grief, like a lot of people are in grief about so many things that they haven't actually you know dealt with yet, they're basically dead waiting on dirt. Mm. They just, they're in, they dug a grave six feet deep. They just laying there waiting to die. And they keep hearing this talk about death, 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 losing, loss, loss, loss. Actually, in, in nature, nothing is lost. There's no losing in nature. Everything is used and converted into something else. Mm. So once we be re once we realize that we are in the transmutation time of ourselves, everything changes. That transmutation time is going to be deep because you got to go through hermesis. Hermesis is when the time when there's pain and there's all of this turmoil that happens during the change, mm. which is course correction. 90% of every journey is course correction. You get on an airplane. That plane ain't just flying straight. It's the wind is blowing it, man. Yeah. The magnetism is birds. I mean, you know, it's all kind of things that the pilots got to, you know, work. And you're driving a car. Course correction. You're walking. You say, I'm going to go from here to there. You got to move here. You got to walk. 90% of our journey is course correction. See, we forgot about that because of the programming, because of the television and the movies and the Disney and all of that kind of stuff. It's got us to this point where we expect things to be, oh, so perfect. I just want to get an app and just swipe and just make it easy. Mm. See, it's not going to be easy, but it can be simple. Simple means I'm taking a step at a time. I'm going to do with today. If I drag tomorrow, yesterday with me, I'm going to suffer. Mm -hmm. I can't fix any of that. There's some things I, I, it's no way in the world I can go back and deal with. If I stay too much in the future, the future is a mystery too. But I can deal with course correcting this particular moment and realize that I'm on the threshold of something brand new. I'm on the threshold of right now. To now is where we should be. Mm. Right now. Because when tomorrow comes, they call it today. You see? So if we can get on that wave and say, okay, I'm, a cap I'm the captain of a ship. Make it a sailboat. Actually, you can make it any kind of boat you want. Some boats is out in the ocean and they're like a tugboat. All they do is drag other people's stuff around. Yeah. Some people is on a warship and they're worshiping all day. They worship this. They worship that. Right. They never are totally in control of their situation. They don't even realize they're the captain. Some folks think that you know, I'm just a worker on the boat. No, you're the captain. But you got to get on that microphone and say, hey, now hear this. Now hear this. This is yeah. the captain speaking. And you're speaking to those 70 trillion cells, which that number is off because somebody told you that there were 70 trillion cells. Who were they talking to? A lot of these ideas they give us, they're not facts. These are theories and theorems and made up stuff. It sounds good. They put it in a book, got a book this thick. You learned it in college. You believe it to be true. But belief is a doubt. You don't know. You don't know how big my I am. I, I'm a boat. I'm a whole biosphere. I'm a magnetosphere. I'm connected to the entire universe. Mm. You can't disconnect me from the universe. You can say I'm from Africa. Well, where, did, what, what, where was Africa at? Wasn't it El Kibolan? Wasn't it one whole continent? Why I got to be from the earth? Why can't I be cosmic? See, once you're separated from who you truly are, which is everything and everything is you, there's no difference between you and I. 
We might say, well, you know, you're 19 keys. I'm Dr. B. Serious. Technically, we're the same. We just are forming our energy and moving in the wind and driving our ships a little differently. But we're all on that same ocean. Mm -hmm. My thing is to help you navigate your ship if you desire help mm -hmm. and not try to force you to believe what I believe. And I tell you, man, you should be going north instead of south. How is there north? How is there up and down on a ball? If, thi if this is a ball, if so, I know they got questions about that. If it's a ball, <laughs> how is there up? Yeah. Ain't no up. You see what I'm saying? No matter how high you go, there's people higher than you. No matter how low you go, there's people lower than you. When I was a record producer and I was making a couple million dollars a year, I was like, man, I got it made. Then I met this dude who was making like a hundred million a year. Mm. And he was looking at me talking about, man, I'm so depressed. I said, mm. you're depressed. He said, I hate money. You hate money. I didn't realize that till later what he was saying. That money has him in a position where it's no longer artistically valu valuable. Mm. He, ha he can do anything. He can make anything happen. So he doesn't work. He used to make boats out of toothpicks. He no longer does this. That making those boats out of toothpicks or playing with yarn or playing pool or shooting hoops, doing something because you love it, that's where the beauty is. Be you. Mm -hmm. I play music now. I don't play music for the music industry. I was at the top of my game in the music industry. When they came to me, I created something that had never been created. Mm. I put people on deck that had never been on deck. There's like 13 people out there right now that I helped put on deck. But then I realized I'm a slave. I'm carrying the, the sheep to slaughter. They're telling us how to make the music. I got into music originally from jazz and Afro-Cuban and yeah. spiritual music. That's why I grew up. You see what I'm saying? Then I got into hip hop. And all of a sudden it was about somebody telling me what I was going to do. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to be. This is what hip hop is. This is what jazz is. And it was all about power and control. And I realized that I'm not an artist anymore. I'm not, I'm not into improvisation. Mm. I'm not driving my own boat. I'm driving somebody else's boat. Mm. Then I learned to let it all go. And this is when I got sick. This is why I got into natural health because I was no longer on the scene. And I was no longer looking at the situation, realizing that it was about course correction. Mm. And when I, when they told me I had a short time to be on the planet, one of the best things ever happened to me because mm. it changed my course. A lot of times we have to have trauma, an accident, something terrible happen in your life. You, you end up in jail or you end up in a situation, a divorce, a, a breakup. Somebody passes away. It could be the best thing for you, depending on how you realize how you see your perspective. And realize that you must now be the captain and there's always going to be a storm on the ocean. Mm. How are you going to deal with it? Mm. Sometimes you just got to let the sails drop and just float and go with it. When you're that flexible, everything changes. But you have to get out of your emotion. We're in a very interesting time. Man, tell me about it. I got a question for you. What does your cabinet look like? What is it that you're taking into your routine that's keeping you high level? If it's not our products, then whose products are you taking? And if it's no products, then that's a problem. Y'all seen our commercials for Goldwater, right? You've seen it all over high level conversations. You come to the show, you grab your bottle, people give us the best testimonials on the planet, and we got people on the go. The thing about Goldwater is it's not our only product. We have products like the vitamin C moss. We don't naturally produce vitamin C, so we gotta get it in other forms. So therefore, especially during winter time, we are able to keep that immune system functioning high. And let's say if you just want pure moss, this is just pure moss. I'm talking about the superfood, the best on the planet. And not just from anywhere, because you never know when people actually getting their moss from. I ain't never seen them take a trip to Jamaica. See, we get ours tested, right? To make sure that you're getting the highest quality, pure version of it, and you're getting those minerals in an over-chemicalized world. We got Smart Moss Gold, right? That Smart Moss Gold is like a Viagra for the brain. You ever find yourself where your brain feels like it's low? You tap one of these and your brain gonna feel high level. Yeah, and women love a sapiosexual, so when those brains are popping and those ideals are running, you stay tapped in. You gotta make sure you stay safe out here. There's all sort of viruses and diseases that's running around this world, especially during this time. If you're traveling, make sure you spray this on the orifices throughout your body to kill any of those viruses or any of those things trying to invade you. So make sure y'all tap into goldwater.com so next time somebody asks you, what's keeping you high level? What's keeping you young and healthy and wealthy feeling? And now we can take some of that credit for it over here at goldwater.com. Make sure you keep your health journey running. It's a marathon. Peace. 
you know, shit, getting out of your emotions is probably the hardest thing for most people. You know, emotions is like light, you know, it's a spectrum, right? As I, you was talking and I was just thinking about, you know, the, the letters L and D, right? You said that D is a four, mm -hmm. right? L is 12. And if you look at, you know, words that start with D and words that start with L are the opposites, mm -hmm. right? You have, number one, even on this planet, we have four seasons, but we have 12 months, right? So it, it, it speaks to a correlation on mm -hmm. that 12-4 frequency. But when you're talking about death, talk about life, mm -hmm. right? You talk about darkness, you talk about light, right? You know, we, we talk about destiny, right? You got love, right? All of these are like opposite frequencies, right? And I, I know that you are into linguistics and I want to get to a point of understanding, right? Especially, you know, I had a conversation with A. a. Rashid and we talked about, you know, Kabbalah and, you know, the association with words and numbers, right? Why is it that we find this association with words and numbers, right? Like if you plan the, the piano keys, right? There's always going to be association between, you know, which frequency that you're hitting and, you know, even this keyboard has letters on it, right? You go hit the, you know what I mean? That's the fourth one, right? But in our bodies and our lives and our seasons, it makes me think that, you know, we don't appreciate just kind of going back to that dark light thing, we don't appreciate the times that we're supposed to have, the seasons we're supposed to have. We're supposed to go through four seasons in a year, literally. If you want all the whole year to be hot, that's probably why you're messing up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the whole, <laughs> you think that the whole entire year is supposed to be hot. Like you're just supposed to be hot the whole year. No, you're supposed to go through downtime. Right. You're supposed to grow through growth time. You're supposed to have time where, you know, what I mean, you rest in time where you really up time where you feel me. So in life, if you don't know how to operate and as you talked about death, it's like for me, death is just darkness and and life is just light. The idea that we can't imagine death is just because when we imagine death, we imagine darkness. Hmm. But that is the imagination of death. You know, you take the stars out the sky, you see a nice sky, you see darkness. That to me is the idea of perceiving death and then perceiving light, you know, is basically you see that sunrise and then it illuminates everything around you and it creates life literally. Right. So, you know, what is the the if, if you do find any correlation between what I said about the 12 and the fours. Right. And linguistically, why do we have words associated with darkness or that four tempo, right, with these and associated with life and love, right, and liberty, right, with that 12, which is that L. Well, you know, L has a lot to do with righteousness, energy moving to the right. Mm. So if you take proteins in the lab, we looked at proteins and you put a laser light through them and the light spins to the right. That mm. means that that is a protein that is conducive for life for you, for humans. If you put that laser light through it and it spins to the left, that's a poison. It will kill you. So arsenic, it spins to the left. You see what I'm saying? Some, you know, uh, black eyed peas, it spins yeah. to the right. Navy beans spin to the right big time. It's because energy has a, there's certain laws with energy. You see? So when they say Christ says, cast your nets to the right, mm. be righteous on your right side, your intuitive side, your more feminine side, cast your nets that way rather than casting them to the left, which is a more, you know, that's like, because that's part of, you know, when we look at masculine and feminine, we look at balance, we look at the whole thing with harmony and duality. You have to know where you're casting your net. So if you're out in the ocean and you're worried about, you, you know, you're looking at where you're going to fish and you see over there, there's white water, all kinds of boats over there. There's, you can see the fish jumping. They're just pulling them out the water. So what would you do if you would like to be really plentiful in life? Would you go over here where everybody's at? Mm -mm. Follow the crowd. Mm -mm. Or you go over here where there's an open blue sea. Mm -hmm. When you go to that open blue sea, to me, which is to the righteous side, mm. which is where I am being totally intuitive. I'm using my first brain. My first brain is my gut. Your gut is your first brain. I mean, there's so many beings that live in your gut. There's so much happening in your gut. You can feel it. And whenever mm -hmm. you go against your gut, what happens? <laughs> You're wrong. Every single time. But we've been told to trust our cranial brain. Trust logic. 
crushed, you know, this whole thing about if more information. Look mm. at all these books. Mm. Some people have never read one of these books. Grandma may have never read one of these books. My grandmother used to sit and knit. And I said, Grandma, you just knit. My grandmother had 23 children. Her and her husband, I don't know how they did this. She's knitting every day. I said, well, Grandma, why are you knitting? She says, I'm knitting together the fabric of our family. Mm. She's meditating. There's a rhythm. You can hear the, the sticks. It was a rhythm. Yeah. She'd have made blankets, man. We had everybody in the family had this stuff she knitted and you used it. But yeah. well, guess what? The metaphysical energy of grandma, the grandmother medicine that was in that, which was connected is to mother. See, we got into father. Father is all about intelligence. Intelligence is information from the past. It's intel. You had to go get it. But what's truly happening right now has never happened before. 19 Keys and Dr. B have never sat in this space. This has never happened before, will never happen again. It's happening in now, you see? So we, at this particular point, are in the righteous place because this had to happen. We talked about doing this once before, but mm -hmm. it could only be done today yeah, at, at this particular right place. At the right time. At the right time. Well, that's interesting. When you say right time, it's not a, it's not a direction. You know it's what I'm saying? It's got to do with that but flow. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a point in time. The righteous time. Yeah. The righteous space. Well, you said something about the elders, though. Knitting in time. Because I remember I was in a, what state was I in? I was somewhere and they had the rocking chair in the airport. And I'm sitting in the rocking chair just chilling. And I just start thinking about how the elders used to be in the rocking chair. Yeah, man, that's where you get your wisdom, man. You know what I'm saying? You just rock away thinking. That's why them old people used to be so wise. Now, old people got their head down on their phone, don't know how to think. We gotta get old people rocking chairs again. All you grandmas out there, you know what I mean? With your little leggings on, trying to be in a club, you need to be sitting your ass down in a rocking chair. <laughs> Thank you. That's what you need. Now these new grandmas, these new grandmas be at the club twerking. They ain't got no rocking chair. With that That's rocking chair, when you sitting there, boy, you just thinking about stuff, baby. I, you know they problems. You know your problems. You know ancestor problems, descended problems. You ain't gotta say nothing, to grandma. Grandma, well, I know what you gonna say, baby. If I'm gonna sit down here, you See? know, what I'm saying I made you some juice. I know you're going through it with the old bald headed girl you've been dealing with. <laughs> That's right. You know, what I'm saying the elders had that rocking chair that wisdom. Rocking chair, sit right that here. rocking chair wisdom is lost in this generation, boy. <laughs> sit here and help me snap these peas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get your little lemonade. Yeah. See, the thing is, man, you know, when I was doing the subconscious alignment work, because I did that for many years, I saw thousands of clients helping to shift their consciousness so that their conscious mind and their subconscious mind are in agreement about getting to a certain goal. Okay. That's the challenge. Mm. And I've realized something, man. When I told clients to go get on the swings, mm. I said, just go get on the swings. They said, huh? Get on the swings. Go, go get on the swings. Or go get, or go find a rocking chair and rock. Mm. When you're rocking back and forth, you're going forward and back. Past, present, future, now. Now you're swinging. Mm -hmm. And you, all of a sudden your DNA begins to have a right swing. Everybody says, oh, we're swinging. We're children again. We're healthy again. Your telomeres say, wait a minute. You know, we was aging. We was breaking off. There's a new message because the telomeres are like little telephones and mm -hmm. the cells are calling each other. Yeah. What's happening outside? We're on a swing. We're children again. You start hearing the children playing in your mind. It's because it, the subconscious doesn't know time. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're feeling, thinking, imagining is happening in the now. You bring it online. So you go do something as a child. The monkey bars and all that was powerful. Yeah. Why do you think they had, this comes from the continent? This comes from the original people. Why were they doing these things, these calisthenics? That's all martial arts. Martial arts has to do with water. Marsh means water. M-A-R means water. Mm. It's fluidic. Being fluid. Being fluid has got to do with being creative. Water always finds a creative way to make it. Water always seeks its balance. I said, empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. So when you are swinging, you are now no longer the person you want to be, need to be. You become in the balanced place of now. But now that you know rocking chair. Not to cut your wisdom, Dr. B, but you know, nowadays, these fluid swingers be on something different. Man, you know, it's a whole nother thing. <laughs> now, it depends on the person's mindset. 
You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, see, it depends on what you see. What your perspective is yeah. on swinging? Yeah, let's go swing. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Yeah. You see, but when you are in a place to allow. I was, I was working with clients and for, you know, a lot of times we had to create what's called a language syntax. A language syntax is a statement, a short statement that says what it is you desire, what your goal is, where you mm. would like to go. What is your telos? Your telos has to do with where you're going, what you see. And we work on this, you know, we come up with this, I am, blah, 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 blah. And you had to say it first person, present tense, and it had to be agreeable or positive. Mm. First person, present tense, positive statement that you could move towards, right? And create. I was working with this one lady and we were like, and we do muscle testing. This mm -hmm. is my specialty is uh, kinesiology. And we would do the muscle testing on the lady and everything she said was, she was weak. Especially I am. It was very weak. And mm. I was like, there's something going on here. And I got into this little state and I was sitting there with her and I got into this dreamy state. And something said, Allah, allow. I had to do the muscle testing on myself. Test. Oh, so strong. Allow. Oh, it hit me. And I said, let's change your statement. And her statement was like, I am healthy, wealthy, and wise. She was weak because she wasn't. Because she didn't believe it. She didn't follow that. She, she heard how hard it was. She learned the language of struggle growing up. Mm. Nothing is easy. It's going to be rough. You see? I said, let's try this. I allow myself to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. We tested her muscles. She was strong. I was like, what the heck just happened? Then I started listening to the word. Allah. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. We're just opening up a channel. We don't have to work at allow. When you allow, you open it all up and just let it happen. You surrender. Oh, we don't want to surrender, especially people of color. Oh, I ain't going to surrender, man. You're going to try to outrun these folks. Mm -hmm. You're going to try to beat them at their game. You're going to try to beat these folks who do this thing 24-7 and got it from you. They're using your stuff. What did they create? It's your stuff used back on you. Allow yourself to be your best self. Allow yourself to let go. Allow yourself to be loving. Allow yourself to be peaceful. Allow yourself to be creative. Just allow when you say that it goes through all of your chakras all your centers open up and we don't have a strong resistance vibration on the word allow mm. we have it on i am because when you say i am it's very root chakra sounds like allow you akbar you see what i'm saying we've been saying it all the time to let the law of the universe work through you because it's flow you know what i mean it's like Going back to the D word, those are friction. It all it starts off with duh, like devil. You know what I'm saying? Then it's a lie. It's a flow, right? Most of the time you look at uh, messengers or deities, but they're named always with flow. It's yes. never named with friction. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And even when you look, you name your child with friction in the name, Ooh. right? And then they develop a frequency of friction because that's the title that they embody. They, they su su uh, personify this sound frequency as they title of who they are. They become this entity. Yeah. Right. So, you know, if you want your child to have a frequency that flows, name them a entity or a frequency that flows. Yes. Because that's what they're going to be called by. That's what they that's that rings in their head. That's their vibration of person say, who are you? Yes. The first thing that they project. Right. They speak this word. Right. So it's a reason why, you know, you don't want to intentionally call like your child a dog. Right. Because yes. first thing somebody say, who are you? You're going to say dog. Right. But then we do that to each other. What's up, dog? You see. Right. So we place those entity markers on each other. Yes. And then we sometimes get mad when we react and act like that thing that we're called. Yeah. I was just called to be this into existence. Mm -hmm. You call the person a bitch. That's a female dog. You call me a nigga. That's like, what you want me to act other than what I was called to act? Yes. Right? So when we say you are God, right? Or, you know, what's up, Lord? Right? He's God. Like, we are calling what we want you to now tap into, connect to. You know, Dr. Wesley said it, I think, powerful. He said, you know, in the nation, 
The stark difference between the nation Islam, Muslims and Muslims around the world is that our goal is not to worship God. Our goal is to become God. Right. Ooh. And you talk about God power and reaching God power. Yes. What is reaching God power to you? Reaching God power is when you are able to scramble the chalkboard mm. and get all the all the things that you have used to identify yourself, erase them. The blackboard. And use what is here in this moment, in this space. To tap into what's already natural. Because most of what you've been taught is lies. Mm. Most of what you've been taught as are mistruths. Most of the concepts are theorems and theories created by somebody. They say, well, you know, you know, so there's only the strongest survive. Well, where does it come from? Mm. About the strongest survive. So now we're in competition, competition, competition. The bees don't believe that. They work in teams. Mm. It's groups. You can the, the, the lion does not will not attack that group of zebras. First, they can't figure them out. Them lines got it confused. Yeah. Man, you might get kicked. Man, yeah. you, you get kicked in the head by, by a zebra, you're done. But you get one by itself, okay, I can single you out. So it's, it's the, we, are, we have to move together in groups. But what happened was, man, what, what, see, it's the 60s and 70s, we had groups. We had bands, right? Then we got closer to the 90s and the 2000s. Now, if solo, we're going to let you go solo. You, you're the best one. you the singer. you the main rapper. So you go solo. Now you're out there by yourself. Mm. Now they can blow smoke up your ass. They can tell you everything, get you pumped up, get you meeting people. And you feel like, yeah, I got this. I got this. They give you a house that you don't really own. They give you some credit and some paper that really is worth nothing. It's yeah. You're pumped up about nothing because where's your team? Where's your family? Nobody's familiar with you. People like you now because you got a lot of money. They like you for a different reason. When we realize that the most powerful beings on the planet work together in groups, mm -hmm. that's what we used to call Harambe. Shit. They pull together in teams. Yeah. It ain't about you and me as separatists. It's about us pulling together, maybe creating our own society away from everybody else. That's powerful. You know. But we have to create it together. We got to be builders. We got we don't make toilet paper. Mm. We talking about having our own society. We got to go. But <laughs> we got to go by well, Scott. Tissue. We got to study society builders. We look at the wrong dimension of beings to try to be right. Yes. And I'm not even intentionally trying to keep going back to these different points of the four and 12. Right. But, you know, we want to be dogs and lions. You know what I'm saying? Those are beings that exist in the third dimension like us. Right. But who exists in a different dimension is the ants and bees. Right. They don't exist in our plane, but they are the greatest builders. Yes. Right. The ants are 10 times stronger. You know what I'm saying? When they send out a drone ant to go check out something, then the whole posse come. They got soldier ants. They have a whole system set up that we operated like the ants or we operated like the bees. We even know how to build civilizations and colonies, right? We would know how to work together in a civilized order and method, right? On a higher frequency. But we look at the animal kingdom and study that and then be like, well, we just like a lion and his pride and the alpha. So we already taking on the expression, right, yes. of a lower being that we shouldn't be trying to tap into as a representation, right? If we want to study something to be, it will have to be something on a different dimension, right? They don't look up in a third and see things from three dimensional perspective. They looking straight. That's the work I got to do. Let's get it done. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So. It's the it's the ants and the bees that we should be tapping into. Yes. Right. Rather than us trying to be the lion of the pack or be a dog in the street. Yes. You feel me? And then that allows us to tap into a higher form. But as long as we're stuck in this anamorph that we are in. Right. Then we're no longer we're not going to learn how to be like insects. We got to stop being like animals and be like insects. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Insects know how to work together. Animals always fighting, always murdering, always killing each other. And not all insects, of course, but I promise you, them ants and the bees are the best ones to study. You study the ants, you're studying on the most intelligent being on the planet Earth. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're going to study the dolphin, that's stepping into a whole nother dimension as well because we're talking about water. Unless you're studying the whales, but we never compare ourselves to them. It's always the cats and the dogs. And you know what? And it shows us where we stuck at. It's the programming. We were taught, taught the language of disempowerment, mm. disembowelment. Mm. What we were taught us how hard it's going to be. 
It's going to be tough to be black. It's going to be tough to be white. It's going to be tough to get married. It's going to be tough to get a job. You got to go to college. You got to struggle, struggle, struggle. You got to struggle to survive. Man, I'm going to tell you something. I've been really successful in my life. I never struggled. Mm. They said that I was dyslexic. I said, wow, I am? <laughs> wow. I'll never forget when I failed algebra. Mm. I came home, I came running home, and brought my mother my report. I said, Mom, Mom, look, look, I got an you F was in happy algebra. To fail algebra. <laughs> I failed that. My mother was like, oh, interesting. Well, I don't know if your father's going to be too hot, happy about that. My father came home, you know, it was always drama. Mm. He came in. I said, Dad, look, I, look, I got an F in algebra. He says, you got an F? You failed. I said, no, I'm free. I don't never have to go back down there again because mm. I'm not going to use that. Well, what are you doing in class? I was watching the bees, watching the birds. And I realized something, man, at a young age. What we're going through is called colony collapse disorder. Colony collapse disorder. Colony collapse disorders. When you take the female, the queen, and disrupt her natural flow, everybody collapses. Everything collapses. See, if you look at the ancient villages, the way they were set up, a lot of them were set up in spirals. They were sacred geometry if you look at them from the sky. You just didn't build your hut here because you want to build a hut. You don't build a hut here. But we got to look at the, the ley lines, the energetic field of the magnetic flux of the planet. We got to look at the stars. We're looking at everything. This is where the hut should go. This is where you should be. This is where the fire should be. This is where we should plant. This is the, this, we, so far from a river. All that th stuff was calculated because we were a colony. Now you start playing with the women. Mm. You start messing with their mindset. You start putting them in certain type of clothing, clothing and teaching them certain kind of language. You start playing with the men. You start telling the man what it is to be the man. And you're this and you're more powerful and you're a warrior. And you don't have to share all the food that you gave, that you, that you hunted with everybody. Right. Keep it half for yourself. You can be the man. See, all of these things create colony collapse disorder. Then it happens. It's entropy. If you have, you keep sucking energy out of a container and without replacing new energy, it implodes on itself. Mm. But guess what? These systems are supposed to happen. What's happening right now is totally natural. This has got to happen. Why? We're becoming compost. <laughs> the earth is composting us. Nothing's going to be lost. We, we in this particular way may not, this is not sustainable. We know that, but it needs to happen so that we can become the next level. So what we've been for, like, let's say 6,000 years, mm. we've been like the nymph. The nymph lives in the water. The nymph is, a, it's a victim. Everything's trying to eat the little nymph, mm. right? And it, nymph is eating everything. The nymph is actually a, the larva of a, of a, of a, of a dragonfly. For Years and years, it's fighting, it's scared, it's in fear, it's going through drama, emotion, it's crazy. It never breathes. They don't breathe, they don't have lungs. They just exist in this dark, mucky water. Then one day, the imaginal cells inside, they turn on. And the imaginal cells, which have been sitting around the genes, they begin to move. They look like little ships. They look like the, the baby planes. Mm -hmm. They begin to move. And when they begin to move, all of a sudden, the nymph crawls up a reed. And for the first time, his body splits open and it takes his first breath. <gasps> and then his eyes pop out. And then his wings, which are all crumpled up, right? It, it, they, they, they start to unfold. But now it's got to move quick because all kinds of things want to get this little nymph that's sitting on this reed. So it's got to move quickly. The water that it lived in represents emotion, all the drama and trauma, all the growth, all the stuff that you've been through down mm. there in the water. It now has water in its body. It uses the water from its experiences and it pumps them with these hydraulic pumps yeah. into its wings. And it pumps the wings up. Now the wings are full of the drama from the past. Then all of a sudden the sun hits them and the sun turns that water into electricity. And then the dragonfly lifts off and it lives this amazing life of love and beauty. It only lives for two weeks. Mm. Under the water, it lives for like two years because all it needs to do is to send a vibration, a wave that opens the flowers in the morning. The flowers are listening for a certain tone from certain animals. Things like the bees, certain bird sounds opens the flowers, which mm. brings out the pollen. 
It's a whole thing that begins to happen. Just like on the 21st of March, all of a sudden, all of the pine trees in the Northern Hemisphere pop open, right? And the male, the, the, the male uh, pine flowers put out this, what they call semen of the forest, pine pollen. Mm. That yellow pollen feeds everything. It has all the nutrients. The whole forest eats that, and that's what gives it its drive. You see? But when you realize that everything is a perfect equal ecosystem, even our craziness mm. at this particular time is a part of the ebb and flow, the up and down, the growth and decline. It always happens. It depends on your mindset. Once you get that, you say, I'm going to do my very best. I'm not going to follow the crowd. When they started telling me how, I, you know, just we just want you to turn the 808 drum machine on. I'm the producer. That's all you want me to do? And it got it got deep, brother. It got to the point where I go to the meeting. All these executives are sitting around the table. Yeah. They don't smile. They don't, they don't gave us lobsters and all this food. They just drinking a little red wine. And they say, B, what you got for us? I hit the button on the drum machine and it goes, doom, 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 doom. They say, wow, wow, that's really great. Now, uh, how many, how many artists can you put on that beat? How many artists can I put on that beat? And here's the lyrics. They start giving us lyrics. We, yeah. need, we need this many killings. We need this many drive-bys. We need all this in the music. Now, here I am. I'm the guy, one of the, two, one of the two people that created what they call West Coast Southern California hip hop. Mm. Me and my partner. Now, all of a sudden. West Coast Southern hip hop. Southern California hip hop. Mm. The first record that really blew up was Ladies and Gentlemen. The dream, the dream, the dream, the dream team is in the house. It was a party song. Blew up was the first one that went gold, along with uh, 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 Egyptian Lover. Mm. Egypt, Egypt. Those records were huge. They were about dancing, expressing yourself. Later on, they turned this into, they, 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 they paid us to turn it into drama, mm. gangsters, fighting. We didn't do that on our own. You see what I'm saying? We were programmed to follow the money. When you're programmed to follow the money, now all of a sudden you create colony collapse mm. because the feminine issue, which is total creativity, is out the door. And it's no longer about flow. It's not, it's, it's, it's especially when it's all of the power is condensed at the top, the rest of the body suffers. Bro. You know what I mean? When you talk about the, a, a, the, everybody at the top getting it, the body politic is suffering. That's like if you only feed the brain. Right now, your body can't move. What about your heart, your yes. lungs? People of society in the world represents different parts. Yes. You know what I mean? You may have a singer that pull on the emotional cords. That's what they there for. Yeah. You may have somebody else that help you think, yes. right? But if you have a society that only empowers the one that helps you think or the one that makes you emotional, then it's going to create an imbalance. Yes. What about the person that's supposed to be the foot? They're supposed to be the foundation of it. You know what I mean? Somebody has to be the hands. And in, in an army, if you only got a general, you're going to lose the war. You know what I'm saying? You got to have soldiers. Then you got to have people doing the drum. So there always has to be order and organization. Yes. Right? In a band, there's an organ player. Yes. Right? You have somebody that might be on the flute, somebody that might be on the drums. You start ripping apart and taking these away. It's no longer a band. But when you have them operating together, then it becomes one band, one sound. Yes. Right now they got flow, right? I just left uh, 1500 Sound Academy, right? And my bro, um, Rance 1500, he got one of the best bands in the world, mm -hmm. literally. Like they, they play for Jay and Beyonce and they be on tour and yes. they have a school for the X-Men. You know what I mean? Where children can come there and learn music, right? And they got schools in shoot, China, Japan, all. And this is a black brother like you and I, yes. you know what I'm saying? From the street, from L.A. And they was able to take their dream and turn it into something. And as I was looking at that compound, it's like, I mean, I got to show you. I got to take you there one day because as you go through it, the, the, the rooms in there are phenomenal. The children in there learning. You got another side where they got the recording equipment, millions of dollars worth of it, creative room, book rooms, all sort of different things. And you're like, damn, how come more people with money don't build things like this? You see? How come it's, it's so hard to do? Right. And what happens is a lot of times that I've noticed is that the child dies by the time the adult gets the money. Right. When you're a child, the things you think about doing with your money is different than what you think about doing as an adult. When you're a child, oh, I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to change the world. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Right. 
Then the billionaire goes to the journey or the millionaire, however it is, goes to the journey of getting the money, right? That child dies, right? That child like imagination or what they would do, mostly because of all the fear. Yeah. The fear starts to become factored in. The dream is no longer there. They start operating in this dream state. Right. And now they're just, you know, uh, 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 living in this state of reality. You know, what I mean, no, this the way things are. I'm not going to change nothing. Why would I spend my money like that? I don't owe nobody. All of these thoughts going, they end up fighting wars to get the money. But the art of that child's mind that was developing and living in that pool of creativity saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. By the time you actually get the resources, it's not there. It's very rare to see somebody maintain that child dream state when they have the resources to bring it into reality. Right. And so now the 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 next generation. Right. And it's funny because. Right now, there's more money being inherited that's making millionaires than it is entrepreneurs becoming millionaires and billionaires, right? We're living through the great wealth transfer, right, of an old generation dying. Henry Kissinger just died. You know, uh, Munge, the money man just died. You know, that's a representation of something happening, right? Even Diddy, you know, being, you know, uh, uh, sued right now and seeing him being taken down in public. It's a rep everything is a sign around us. If you can't see the signs, right, you're not really living and you don't know which direction to go. No man can travel on the road too long without seeing a sign. You know what I'm saying? If you don't see a sign that say exit or a sign that say, you know, whatever highway number is ahead of you, then you might be lost or you a man with no real true destination. So as a people, if we're operating, we have to be looking for the signs and those signs, either we decide what they mean for us by the power of perspective, right? Perspective is so powerful because perspective is also, you know, not just the way you see things, right? But it is controlling what was saw, right? Because, you know, you can see somebody get beat up and you can decide that, you know, Maybe that was a lesson for why am I viewing this violence? You know, maybe this is a lesson on how I should be more peaceful in life. Or I should create more peace in the universe, especially within my own home. Maybe this is a lesson. I seen death that it reminded me that life is short. You know, maybe I seen war. Maybe this is a lesson and a sign that, you know, I should go inspire the world because we're going through dark times. So let me bring light. People take signs differently. Everybody. Right. But it's your choice to decide what that means. Signs and symbols is for the righteous minds. You know, something you said is triggering me in my gut. Mm. I think that the statement that a whole lot of people aren't creating these new ideas mm -hmm. and new ways for people to change and new platforms, I think that's maybe a little bit from the past. You know why? Because I look at you. You said a whole bunch of people aren't creating it. You know, we 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 talk about what people aren't doing. Well, how come more rich people, black people, or creative people, or wealthy people are not helping or creating all these platforms that could help us grow? Well, I know why they not, but that's why I was speaking on rants as somebody who actually did because I'm just giving the formula of when you do see it, why it is that way. When I see them, he always say like, "We like the Power Rangers." That's a statement he didn't get as a grown man. That's a statement he got as a child, right? And so I'm, I'm not worried about who's not doing it. There are some powerful people who are doing it. You look at EYL. You look at what we doing, right? You look at what Billy Carson is doing. You know, when, when, you, when you can literally protect the essence of that child dream state and have the resources to bring it out, those are the light bearers and bringers of the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? The other people may just serve as an example. And then they may do things that help us make it easier for us to usher in the things that we want to do. So for me, it's all interconnected because without them, it's no us. Because sometimes we get a chip on our shoulder. Y'all ain't doing enough, so I'm about to do a lot. But if they was doing it, we would have felt spoiled and maybe not have done anything. So I look at it as a good thing. Like there is no such thing as bad. It's just light and dark and how I want to use the dark and how I want to use the light. Peace family is 19 keys. This is 19 minutes. When you focus on creating, the experience that you have of making money is going to be automatically dialed into that. Not in excuses, because I don't live with excuses. I live with decisions. We're so fixated on the attention and not where the value actually is. Is that the success is not in completion. 
The success is in the execution. When I saw that, it turned me up to another level as far as what I'm able to know that I can accomplish. If they take my deal away right now, I know I'll find another way to get money. Yeah. Cause it's just the hustler in me, but I feel like I'm always in that mode, bro. No matter what I'm doing, I'm taking something in. It doesn't mean we have to agree. It doesn't mean any of that, but we're sharing truth. That it's not your responsibility to stop triggering people. It's their responsibility to heal. My ancestral part is you do for your people. If they can understand rare human beings that build out all of their complexity and live around their gifts, skills, and talents. What I see. I see 19 keys. This man has opened up 19 doors. Yes, sir. 19 locks. Oh, I know what's happening here. Yes, sir. The beginning and the end. The alpha and the omega. You are living in the cave. See, what they say, Moses went up on the mountain in the cave, mm. in the darkness to get mm. the law, right? Muhammad, he went up in the cave. Angel comes to him, right? You got Jonah. He got to get swallowed up by the whale. He's in darkness. What they call Jesus the Christ is in the cave, in the darkness, kinesthetic, auditory, visual experience where everything is created in that dome, in that dark particular place, right? The 19 keys, you're at the beginning and the end. You have created something and are creating something that never happened before. It could never happen again. You're changing this whole thing. You're helping so many people that could never get help. You're touching people in a way who they had, it's people that may have wanted to just let go and just give up. Mm. You're giving them the energy. You're giving them keys. You're passing them out. You're not just talking about them. You're showing them how. You got to you, watch the way you move. I, say, I turn off the sound because I don't want to hear what you're saying. I want to see your energy. I said, you see him? He's transforming. He's got so many entities working through him. I can feel it. I'm not going by what I'm thinking. You are that thing that is changing everything. So, of course, there's a lot of folks out there that's working against this, but they can't. They can't mm. stop you because you got 19 keys. They don't understand what the 19 keys is all about. Mm -hmm. They have no idea. They know nothing about the number 19. I said, when I first heard, I said, what's the brother's name? 19 keys. Oh, wait, 19. I said, wait a minute. I used to work with Mother Tynella. She used mm -hmm. to talk about the 19 and 19. Dr. B, watch out for the 19 and 19. She break, she, we would talk about this for hours. Yeah. But because you're doing what you're doing, you are the transmutation. You see, we talked about names. Giving a child a name with ah in it is extremely powerful. Ah, Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha. All of those names, Jesus, they all got the ah, they got breath. Either they got breath in them or they got light in them. E is power. That's power. E five, that has to do with power refinement. You just can't have power. It's got to be refined. But E also it is energy. Energy in motion tends to stay in motion till acted upon by an equal or opposite force. Yes, sir. So you can be emotional all day long, right? If you don't stop yourself, depending on the type of emotion, because if it's good emotion, let's keep it flowing. But when you're able to put the brakes on, wait a minute, I'm out of line here. I'm upset about something that really didn't happen. It's in my mind. I got a story I've created because every time you see something, that's not what happened. That's what the brain, your, you know, your, your synapses in your brain, your particular experience says that's what that was. That was wrong what they did. You know, you're traveling with the wise man. Why is he killing folks and beating people down? Well, I thought you was the wise man. Look, I told you, if you're going to travel with me, just be quiet. Mm. Because you have no idea who that person's person was going to be. Mm. You have no idea why I got to cut down these weeds right here. You have no idea what that was going to grow one day. You see what I'm saying? I got to deal with the parasitic energies of some things that's going to suck the life force. You see? So no matter what the, the parasites are doing, no matter what, what we call the enemy is doing, we got to look at what we're doing. And we're spinning. We're doing something that has never been done. I watch the sisters that you motivate. I watch the sisters and you be, you raise them right up. They get this whole thing and they, they posture start changing. I said, you see, he's doing the magic. He's the, he's the magi. He's not one person. When we realize that we are channeling everything that came before us, we're everything mm. and we have power. And no matter what they tried to do, they can't stop us unless we give up. You got to give up. You got to let go. Oh, they got us, man. It's the, the white man and the black man, and they're going to this and this religion. It doesn't make any difference. What are you going to do today? When you wake up, you just died from yesterday. 
You got to work. First thing you need to do is have a goal each day. This is the one thing I tell folks. I say, draw a circle on the ground. Before you get out to bed, make a circle three times with your right hand clockwise and put a word in there. Winner or whatever it is. And step into that circle. Your subconscious thinks that is real. That You just gave a, a, a alert. You're on the microphone of your ship. Now hear this. Now hear this. This is your captain speaking. We are winners. You step into that. I guarantee for the rest of the day, every cell in your body is programmed winner, winner, winner. Now you can start trying to lose if you think by speaking the language of loss, by watching the news. You watch the news and you're going to be, it's a nuisance. It's going, it's going to mess you up because somebody told you about all the bad stuff that was happening. What about the good stuff? What, what Can I have the good news? Can we talk about what's happening right now in the rainforest? How are you going to tell me that all the bees is dying? You know how many bees is in my yard right now? I've seen more bees this year than I've ever seen in my life. And I'm a bee. And I got a connection with the bees. Yeah. Me and the bees, I got stung by thousands of bees one time. Mm. My father said, Who's don't run. Show? Don't scream. Just stand there. Man, it's bees. Are you crazy? He says, breathe. Then the bees stop stinging me. Then all of a sudden, I got this numbness and this feeling, and I could hear the sounds of the bees. <laughs> Little did I know that the note that they were singing that they put out is a C five thirty five twenty eight. Mm. It repairs DNA. Mm. My mother had MS, and she wanted to go get the bee sting therapy because when the bees sting you, they actually put this endorphin and this energy in your body, which begins to break down the inflammation. Mm. It begins to release the pain. Sometimes you need an opposite force to stop something. Mm. So the bee is stinging you, feel like it's hurting you. It doesn't want to do that because it's going to die. It's doing it to wake you up. Life sometimes wakes you up. Wake up. Wake up. When you say, okay, I'm ready. I'm awake. And see, to be totally awake. So we talk about being woke and awake. You have to be constantly creative and aware in the moment and be totally improvisational in this moment to be totally awake. Just being woke, you woke. So you just barely woke up. You just got out of the theta state. You just in between sleeping and awake. So now what you're gonna do? You're gonna sit with all this knowledge and blow people's minds. I see that all the time. All right, man, all this deep stuff. This is deep, ain't it? People, oh wow, that's deep. What are we gonna do with it? Mm. What are we gonna do? So there are some of us on the planet right now that are actually doing. Yeah. We're emitting. You see what I'm saying? So people like you, people like, you know, uh, Brother Rich, you know, people like Billy Carson. And there's a whole and the sisters, too. The sisters, they may not be as, you know, out there right now. They're coming. Mm -hmm. They're coming. They have to. We have to lead the way at a certain point, And then what? We have to heal the hive. Mm. The, the bees have an order. Let me tell you one thing about the bee. The queen bee says, look. I need y'all to get out there and go get the bees, go get the, the pollen from a, a farm five miles away. And there's some petunias over there. Go get that honey and oh, that, that pollen and bring it back to me. So the bees, are, they gonna, they're going to do exactly what the queen said to do, except one or two. Man, I ain't going, man, we ain't going way over there, man. There's some, it's some dandelions right here in the front yard. I'm going to get them and bring that pollen back. So that, that bee comes back to the hive and she can smell it. She can feel it. She says, Go get him. Bring his here. Bring his ass right here. <laughs> yeah. And then he'd like, what? Please, please. And she stings him to death. Eats him and feeds him to the babies. Don't you ever. Why? I was just, it's the same pollen. It's mm. not. She knows the season. She knows the way the wind is blowing. Yeah. She knows things about the cosmos. When a star, a, that's energy from the stars has been traveling for billions of years. Some of them stars aren't even there. She knows when serious rise and when serious falls. She knows the position. And if you think that that sky is the same sky, you done lost your mind. That is not the same sky. Have you noticed how the moon is twisted now? This face used to be up. Now it's off to the side. Everything is changing. So you have to be ready to change in the moment. The queen, she's able to really realize what's happening in the moment. She's not an ego thing. We need order. What we need right now in our communities is organization. We need a 19 keys, right? Because that's what you're doing. I see what you're doing. You're dropping seeds. It's 19 keys popping up in every city. You on a tour? I said, he don't want on the tour. What is he doing? He going from city. This, I said, oh, I know what he's doing. He's following the law, the law of the all. And this is what's going to change everything. Not being afraid and having fear. Well, they going to get you, Dr. B. They're not going to get me. What are they going to do to me? Mm. I got divine protection. Mm. You're going to need security. I got, I am secure. 
I see the cure. I know what to say. I'm very careful about how I say it, when I say it, and why I say it. Mm. He said, well, Dr. B, you know, you be cracking jokes and having fun. I said, people need a little laughter. We need security, but we also need some fun to move those, those fluids through the body, the seven oceans, the humors, to move that energy. We need all of that. We need play. Because when I get on the monkey bars, when I go to the swing, my body says, you are young. You are youthful. Play. Play. I don't go to, when I play music, I don't work music. I play it. It's so much fun, man. Mm. But it got to the point where when I was in the commercial music business, it wasn't fun no more. This was work, man. How do you differentiate work and play from a definitive term? Because what you said, because let's say, you know, f for me, well, I'm not, I always do this. I was about to give you my definition. I want to hear yours first. So just the difference between work and play in the way you go about doing things. If you treat something like work versus treating it like play. I don't know how to treat anything like work because work is war. Mm. It's war. It's fighting. I don't fight. See, I learned a very special technique. The only time you fight is you're going to take them out and kill them. Mm. The art of war. The art of war is don't fight. You see what I'm saying? Let the energy move. Let them say whatever they want. They can cuss you out. Folks have tried to cuss me out. I just listen. And I say, wow, that was a lot. You're right. Check this out. They done called me every name in the book. I says, you're right. Hmm. I'm going to take that into consideration. Mm. That was very interesting what you said. I am going to take it into consideration. And I apologize if anything I said or did made you feel that way. Thank you very much for your approach. And I walk away. I just took that weapon. Do you realize what I just did? Mm. You came to me with war. I turned it into love. And I said, I'm going to take it into consideration. What did that mean? It means that I'm going to go and let it, the stars, the word <laughs> consider. You. Yeah means to let the stars, not the sun. The sun got a huge ass ego. I can't do my spiritual work when the sun is out. I'm like some of the indigenous Dogons and people like that. We don't do that work when the sun is out. The sun has got too much light. I'd like the light of all of the galaxy on me. You see, all the stars, they're all entities that's going to give me information. Mm -hmm. Consideration means I'm going to stop. I'm not going to give you a decision. I'm not going to make a move. I'm going to let the night come. Mm -hmm. Let the night fall on me. Yeah. Then tomorrow, I will give you a more clear answer let to that Let that simmer thing. in a little bit. Let it simmer. Let it simmer. Then I tell the person, they tell me I'm crazy and you ain't no good. And how you going to be an herbalist? You don't. I say, you're right. Mm. They hear in their mind, they're correct. I didn't say you were correct. I said, you're right. You're righteous. You're self-righteous. And what you decide to say, and from your point of view, that's it. Well, it's funny because it's it's also the best way to have a conversation that keeps it flowing. Yes. Even if you disagree with somebody, yes. if you say you're right versus and or but or yeah, you know I mean those are stuff that creates friction. Yeah. But if you like right, 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 you're in a state of agreement, right. then saying your point. Yes. Right. That's the best way to have a conversation with somebody if you want to be in flow and build on top of things versus, you know, I hear you, but whoa, first, the moment somebody here, but like, wait a minute, you know what I'm talking about? How, how you going to agree with me? And now you about to tell me exactly why you disagree with me. You see, and regardless of what you say afterwards, <laughs> it, 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 you already offended me. Yes. You know what I mean? Because first of all, you're trying to trick my senses. Yeah. Right. But it, if you come off and be like, right, 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 right. Now, let's continue into that thought. Now, let's think about it this way. So you allow respect and a space yes. for they thought. Yeah. But now, you know, it's a lot of space in this universe. So let's get over here. Right. And I'm going to plant a star right here and make my point. Now, see? if you now we can create a constellation in this conversation. You see, you understand me by the time we done. It's like a whole universe. Yeah. We ain't got to We ain't got to be in friction. and We can be in flow. So and it also had me thinking when you said about about work and play. The only way, you know, if you if you uh, have a TV screen and you want to watch a movie, mm -hmm. right? How do you know if it's working is when it's playing, right? And life is a motion picture. Mm -hmm. You don't see a person playing, mm -hmm. right? Then they not really living. They life not really working out for them. Yeah. For me, you know, playing is the enjoyment of the work itself. When things are really working out for you, yeah. you playing. Play. You know what I mean? You in the playing field. Right. When you got a, a good strategy for something, they say run the play on the field. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? In life, we haven't learned how to play. Yes. Right. And that's where we go back to that childlike state. Right. That childlike state. I get money. I'm a play. 
I'm playing in my imagination. And my imagination is where everything is possible. My imagination is where 100%, because we always talk about, I was talking to Dame, Dame always talk about, we got 8% brain power. Now, I never agree with that. But the brain power is not even the, the thing that should be the hyper focus. It's the mind power, Ooh. right? The mind power is 100%. And imagination is proof that the mind power is 100%. Yes. Look at the lineage of what man thoughts was able to produce throughout reality and time. From ancient times, man's mind power was crazy. They was connecting pyramids with star systems before there was what we consider conventional technology and or means. The mind power of imagination is high, right? But when we think about brain power, we're now looking at this state of physical existence and thinking about the limitations of machinery, right? But the brain has a phantom brain, which is the mind, which is always 100%. In your imagination, you could be living in an attic in a shack and be a crackhead. But if your imagination can start firing up, you can imagine everything completely different in your life all the way turned around. That's 100% mind power tapping into a different dimension, allowing you to exist in that state for that moment of why you having that thought and then when you start working right now you plan in that thought and you start living it right so it's like when you wake up or you go to sleep you have of course sleep cycles as you're sleeping right i, st I started to track my sleep cycles so I, I like to know now when i'm getting light sleep when i'm getting deep sleep when i'm getting REM sleep right and it lets you know if you get the best rest right you wake up and you get a, a you have everybody has a certain level of readiness when they wake up Right. Some days it take you a little longer to where you start to get to that baseline state because what people need to figure out is what is your baseline in life? You don't know if you stressed unless you know what your, your baseline is. Right. If your blood temperature go a little higher. Right. You get a little in, uh, 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 dopamine spike. You feeling good throughout the day or you get that cortisol. Now you feeling stress. Yes. Right. For me, being able to get that good rest during the day. Having that readiness, I'm jolting, I'm ready to go. I'm all action for the day, right? And then setting up the habitual routine to where yes. I can get into, I start working so I can get to the plan, right? Now I'm living a life of people be like, yo, what you doing? Or what do you do for work? And it confuses me like, damn, I play, I don't work. That's See, why it's hard for me to answer the question. We used to call each other player back in the day. What yeah, up, player? Yeah, you got to be See, a it got player, to a point man. where player became a band. You know, you know I'm people down there the players. You know about the players. Them players, man, you, know? they, you better stay away from them players down there. Yeah. You know what they got going on. They yeah. hustlers. Hustlers became a bad thing. What do you mean? Yeah. Hustler became bad. You just, you need to go to college, get a good job. You know, you're going to need to get a, oh. get a good job just over broke. You see, yeah. but see what they play with your mind. See, mind. Go to work. M-I means miracle. Mm. Do, re, me. See, they shouldn't have showed me the scale. Mm. Do, it's cash. Mm. Ray, the mm. rays of energy, what they call radiation. Yes, sir. Me is miracle. Mm -hmm. Your mind is miracle. M-I is the miracle. Hmm? N is the female flow of energy, liquid, fluidic space. Mm -hmm. The D is power refinement. Most folks don't have their mind anymore because they are living under chronic servitude syndrome. Chronic servitude syndrome. syndrome. <laughs> they have agreed to be slaves, mm. even of somebody else's beliefs. You're trying to be what your mom and daddy wanted you to be. They weren't who they wanted to be. You people are, they're mimicking what they saw. I remember when they came to school and it was career day. I'll never forget this, man. 1976 or something. They come to school, it's career day. And they had about six careers. You could be a refrigerator repairman. You could be an auto mechanic. They didn't never mention about, nothing about an entrepreneur. They didn't mention nothing about being a CEO. It was all about being a servant, working for somebody, trading my time for money. I was like, wait a minute, this is all there is? What, how come musician ain't in there? Well, you know, so, you know, musicians, they really, you know, it's a lot of drugs, a lot of sex, rock and roll. They don't really, they don't really own anything. I says, I got some friends that are so rich. And all they do is play. They play music. They have fun. I got friends who are artists. They draw. I got friends who are photographers who do some photography that's off the chain. You're telling me that's not viable? It's not viable if you want me to just be a servant. 
So people in their mind are programmed to be servants. But I think that's where it goes for just being a servant, because I don't think being a slave is a bad thing, depending on what you're a slave to. Because, you, you know, it's being the it's, it's, you got to be a master and a slave. You got to be a general and a soldier. And you are. The, the problem is people are slaves to the wrong thing. See, and what right? happens is you can be a slave to your good nature. Followers. Right. You can be a slave to your dreams. You know what I mean? You can be a slave to a feeling of execution, a slave of God. Right. But most people are, are slaves of their lower nature and slaves of the devil. Right. And so the thing that they're following, they don't like. They're not aligned with. Right. And so this is where people get that feeling of they feel like they sold they soul because they feel like they became a slave of something that they're not in agreement with. So they contracted right to someone that they weren't in agreement with. And now they have to do his bidding. So now it's against their will, but they have to follow the will of another. Yes. Right. And so once you are a slave to something that is against your good nature and your good will, yes. that's when you become on demon time. So the goal is to figure out how do you be a slave to something you actually want to serve? Yes. How to be a master of something you actually want to produce? Yes. Right. A master uh, 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 to where, you know, in your body system, like you say, the gut can be the master. The brain can be the master. The heart can be the master. Right. And you or you could become a slave to following one of those things. You follow your heart so much. You're a slave to your heart. Right. Person always falling in love with the next woman that smiles at him. You know what I'm saying? You know, or you can be a, you can have more of a mastermind. Right. I like conjuring and putting things up. And some people, they like falling in love or was created by masterminds that produce things. Yes. Right. So there's a balance of learning. We are all slaves to something or masters of something. Mm -hmm. Right. What are you a slave of? First of all, create that list emotionally. What am I a slave to? Right. What what emotion do I follow the most? Right. A lot of those we talked about are subconscious. Right. When people think subconscious, a lot of times they only think the mind. Right. But there's the subconscious heart and the subconscious gut. Right. If we talking about, you know, the mind and the brain, we have to look about the deeper layers behind all of them. You have a subconscious gut that you can't get to because there's so much stuff on top of your conscious gut. So we don't know how to follow it because we don't know if we can trust it. And then you feel like your heart didn't led you astray so many times because you don't know how to tap into your subconscious. What's the root that's behind the decision and the feeling that emanates, right? That then sends you a signal that becomes an order that you become a slave to. Because if you can get to the root of that, you can say, ah, I understand why I feel that way. Now that I understand why I feel that way, I control the will, right, of what of, of me mastering whether to go with that and how many times to go with that. Because you can have an impulse to do something. I had an impulse to say something. Nope. Wait a minute. I'm not a slave to that thought. <laughs> right. Why? Because it doesn't play out to what the type of result that I want. And that's when man learns to be a master. So he has control over self because self is always trying to burst out. Self is always trying to do stuff. Self be tripping sometimes. Self be like, let's drink, let's smoke, let's party. I don't want to do nothing but play. No, in order for things to play, they have to work first. So that's the balance, right? The worker is the slave. The master does the playing. The slaves in the field doing all the plowing and the working. The master up there knocking down his wife playing, enjoying life. You know what I'm saying? So that's the balance for me. You know, is finding the time of work and play, finding the time of slave and master, finding the time of master and soldier. And sometimes we get caught up with doing. We work so much, right, that when we play, it becomes toxic because it becomes an escape from the work. Right. Versus being a result of the work. Peace, family. If you want to see us at the highest level, if you want to see us at the top of the podcast charts, <laughs> this is the way you can help, not just with your views and your attention. First of all, I want to thank you for being here, listening, watching, sharing, but we also need you to comment. This is how support looks like. I need you to comment the best thing you liked about the episode or the worst thing. It's up to you, whatever you would like to share. Then I need you to go and put in the five stars. Go to Apple's, go to Spotify's, go everywhere. And I need to see them testimonials. And I need you to go on Apple and Spotify and download and subscribe. The more downloads we get, the better we're able to do a business. And the more we can grow this high level media. 
Again, I want to thank you all for supporting. Thank you all for tapping in. If you want to book, the booking email is 19keys at 19keys.com. Tap in. See, the subconscious mind is one of my specialties. Parasites, period. It's my specialty. Most folks know Dr. B for many years. I created a parasite cleanse, which deals with systemic parasites. Mm. That's different than the little ones that you're talking about in your colon. There's all kinds of different levels of them. The subconscious can be a parasite. Mm. You could have a mental parasite because it is the repetition of pleasure or pain that creates your habits. Mm. The repetition of pleasure or pain is how you reprogram your subconscious. Some people are programmed for pain. They need to struggle. They're always looking for more resistance. If it ain't hard, if it ain't crazy, if it ain't drama, they, they don't feel it. That's how they were programmed. You see what I'm saying? Those programs can be changed based on you having a goal. The biggest question I ask clients, I said, what would you like? When I was seeing clients, I very seldom ever met anybody that can answer this question. Mm. They come to me. I don't care if they got cancer, diabetes, they, they, they're going through whatever, they're depressed. I said, well, what would you like? Well, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be, have, I don't want to break up no more. And I said, what would you like? And they go on and on by what they in no way like. <laughs> yeah. I said, but what would you like at the end of the day? What's your telos? What's your goal? And they kind of like, I don't, I don't know what you mean, Dr. B. Where would you like to be? And I got to work with them. Sometimes it takes weeks to create a place that they would actually like to be. Once we create that, which is your what, then we got to create your why. Why? Because a lot of people ain't got no why. Because I just want to make a whole lot of money and such and such. That's cool. Most people are dealing with how. How am I going to make it? How? I, right now, I could tell you an easy way to make lots of money. It's not that hard. It's actually pretty easy. It's pretty mm. simple. I've done it over and over. But that's not what I, that's not my thing. I realized it wasn't the money. It was the people, helping people. My why is to help people. First, we need to know what is your goal. You got to be goal-minded. Why the heck is there always a genie in these old movies? Because the rug is the DNA. The genie is the genes. And when you rub the body, which is the bottle, the container for the genes, right? Out pops, right? The vapor pops out the top. The top pops out the top of your head, which is the chimney, right? Out pops this vapor, a mystical vapor. Mm. And it asks, what would you desire? Mm. Your genes, every second of every day are asking you what you desire. But your language is very important. And you think in a certain language. If you only are telling me what you in no way desire, that energy is so strong that you move towards that because it's a command. Your thoughts and prayers are the, are the, that's the temple at which you pray. What would you like? Uh, even if you say, I need a lot of money, what, what would you do with the money? Mm. Oh, I, finally, we may get to the point where I'd like to just travel the world and be on beaches and, and okay, now we got something. Now, can you imagine the beach? Can you feel it? Close your eyes. They said, well, I could see it. I said, no, your eyesight is not your best. You've been getting photoshopped since day one from the movies. Mm. Your eyesight is trickable. Your eyes are seeing what you desire to see. I want to go to your gut. Feel it as if you're there. Mm. Be at the beach. Can you feel the sand? I don't know, Dr. B, I'm nervous. And they start crying and everything. I need you to feel the sand. Imagine, use your imagination. I am a nation of genies. Feel the sand. Okay. I said, feel a wave coming in in this water. I can feel it. I can feel it. The whole subconscious, every cell in the body says, you hear what's happening with the captain? Stop playing the old tapes. Because see, the subconscious is old tapes. It's a new recording happening. We're creating a new movie. He's doing a mind map. Feel it as if you're there now. Feel the wind. Now open your eyes. Smell the air. What's it smell like? Mm. What does it sound like? Last, what does it look like? When we've created a kinesthetic auditory visual mind map, the subconscious says that's our new, that's our new goal. We're going to be there. And I say, now you got to stay there every day. You just can't come here and have a session with Dr. B and go home all happy. No, you got to get into a mind map situation every single day. You got to wake up in the morning and you got to remember this. When you go to bed at night, the main thing you got to do is call the seed time meditation. This one is deep. Just before you go to sleep, what are you thinking about? Mm -hmm. What you didn't do, what you could have did, what went wrong, what could go wrong, 
who died, who this, who that. I'm still mad at such and such. I need to cuss them out tomorrow. You are programming and planting seeds in the fertile subconscious earth. And you're giving commands. And tomorrow you're going to wake up and your body's going to move towards all those things. And you're confused. Now, if you just say, I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise and helping others do the same. Mm. I am healthy, wealthy, and wise. And after a while, let's get rid of the I am. I am attracting health, wealth, and goodness and helping others do the same. Over and over. Over and over. Not no long, because people have these mantras, man. They be messing them up. They reverse <laughs> mantras. <laughs> Giving Obama speeches. You, you, you know, what you, what you talking about? I, you know, I no longer want to have cancer and I, I want to find my dead brother because <laughs> I thought his grave is somewhere up. And they talk about all this stuff. You ain't said nothing right now that your body's going to actually be able to do. It's confusing. And uh, the and excitement you're talking of it. The language of a slave. Mm. Now, when you say, I, uh, I am attracting all things desirable. That's, that's key. I, am, I allow myself to attract all things desirable and help others do the same. That's your why. You will begin to do it now. When you lay in the bed at night, you got to repeat this over and over. You need to feel it. That's kinesthetic. Hear it in your mind and see it. It's called a K, kinesthetic auditory visual experience. Mm. When you stay there, the only thing your subconscious can do is do what you tell it to do. You are the captain. That thing is programmed by you. It's just a secretary. You know what the secretary do? She don't read the books. She just takes the books, your feelings, your emotions, and puts them on the shelf. The ones that, that, that have the most vibration, that have the most energy, are at the top of that file cabinet, up top, ready to be grabbed. So you might see a color blue. That's the same color blue you see when you had an accident in a blue car. You may be driving and see a blue car and you tense up. You don't even realize. You see a blue car, subconscious says, oh my God, could be an accident. There's a place right here, right in, in, in Los Angeles on, on uh, 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 what is it, uh, Sentinella? There's a place where I had an accident. I had a blue Mercedes. Man, this car came out, twisted my car. I had a car that did. The frame couldn't be bent. Mm. The car was bent. A truck hit me. Mm. Every time I drive through that intersection, I got to breathe. Why? Because there's a program that says I might get hit again. Right. It's not true. Nothing ever happens the same. History never repeats itself. But as I repeat this statement over and over called the seed time meditation, before I dr drift into sleep, I go into the theta state. I'm in between sleeping and awake. When I'm in between sleeping and awake, guess what? Now I'm in meditation. When I'm in meditation mode, it's about me and my mind connecting to the desire, to the goal. I'm creating the goal mind. I'm telling my genies what it is I desire. The genies are going to do what I tell them to do. Things are not happening just because it's happening. It's be happening for you or from you. Mm -hmm. So you create the seed time meditation and you do it every day. Don't fall off after a couple of days. After, you know, you used to do it, then you forgot. That's the problem is most people never do nothing, anything long enough to get results. Yes. Right. The, the inconsistency with human beings at an all time high because we get distracted with things. We Mass start a new habit. You know, a, a new ritual yes. and then it's done. But it's because the art of, you know, attaching new habits and rituals to ourselves is lost. Yes. Right. It's not as easy. Everything requires a science and a process. There's a way of doing everything. Yes. Right. If you want to be a janitor, there's a way Ooh. that a master janitor is going to get the best results. Whew. Right. It's not going to be the same as somebody who just pick up a mop and no, he got a process. Yes. Right. And when you learn how to be, a, have a process, when you become a pro. That's right. right. And so in life, when you want to pick up a new habit, it's not just it's not about force. Yes. Right. We try to force ourselves to do something. We have to create a flow. Yes. Right. And operate within our nature. What do we already do? Right. And how can I attach to things that I already do? Yes. Right. So it's like. If you want to create more content and you got to wake up in the morning and create the content and the atomic habits to talk about habit stacking. Yes. Right. So what do you do? You wake up, you brush your teeth. What are you going to do right after you do that thing that you're consistent at? So you attach something to that. So now your brain is like, okay, we got one thing. Now we're in a rhythm. Now when you get to that rhythm, you can start creating these cycles. Okay. I did that right after this. I'm going to do that. So for me, it's about, you know, we are very magical, beautiful, brilliant, you know, vive, vivacious people. But we have to get back into our science. You know how? We follow you. What did you do? You created a brand, but your brand is your habit. A habit is an outfit. Mm. 
So you come from a, 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 a teaching where it was about never mind all this individuality. You wear an outfit. So we don't need to be, you don't need to be captain. You don't need to be this for a minute. What the minister say, no titles. Cause y'all tripping. You see what I'm saying? Just do what you're here to do. That habit, that rhythm, that outfit creates something. So when people see you, automatically you've dropped into the subconscious of people because it's a certain look. They're going to know you're going to have a certain hat or bandana or a diadem. You're going to have something on that says, I got a rhythm here. If you're going to jump into Crown Society, you're saying that I represent power, I represent knowledge of self. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready. I wear the crown to just symbolize, like, I know who I am, I know why I'm here, I know my purpose. Friends. It's abundance, it's royalty, it's prosperity, it's energy. It's Put in. Yeah. I gotta walk with my head held high, because you gotta see this and you gotta see this. I believe that if anybody wants to be able to protect their mind and be able to think freely, you gotta get crown society today, man. Blue pill, the color palette's all black. James Bond mix with Malcolm X and my Che Guevara era. That's the that's the the uniform is uni meaning one. It's the one form. Man, when you got one form, right? Is 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 the in branding? It's like if somebody wanted to create a Halloween costume of you. Mm -hmm. Right. If you got a million forms, it's hard to be like if 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 somebody created a costume, they'd be like, who are you? But if that person has that one form that stands out, that becomes an entity marker in the mind in association with that person. So now if you put on a crown, you know what I'm saying, and you go out and be like, oh, you you keys for Halloween. Right. So for me, that brand association is that science of building. And this is where we we love that we are very, like I said, we're brilliant, magical people, but the magic has to be bottled. And it has to be bottled so that it can be shipped around the world. Embodied. But if you can't, if you don't know how to create that process and experimentation is the mark of a good scientist, right? Many people don't experiment. We be asking, tell me what to do. Experiments. Experiment. Right? Study. Experience. Hypothesize. Oh, I think it will work this way. Well, go test it. You test it, it didn't work out. That's not the mark of quit. That is information how to do and what to do next. Practice. Okay, see if it's going to work. That's what every single scientist do. Course correction. Right? So now you're getting better and better and better. That's the process of refinement, right? You have to constantly redesign and refine yourself within the process. Sometimes people consider themselves to lose themselves, right? And then what we do, we just refine ourselves. It's not hard. Right. But when you have a process and a way of doing things, a warrior has a way. Right. So it is about getting into the flow and creating structure and creating organization and creating order. Right. And having steps. And usually it's putting them in fours. Right. What's the one, two, three, four. Right. You give a, that one, two, three, four is such an easy uh, 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 rhythm for anybody to remember. Yes. Right. So when you think about what is something that think about four things you need to do every day, think about your four pillars of your brand identity. Think about the four values of your mission statement. Right. Think about four colors within your brand uh, archetype. Right. Think about your top four values that you have. We talk about it all the time. What is the top four rappers or top five rappers? You don't go to what's your top 100. Nobody can remember all of that. By the time you get to 100, man, they so insignificant. It don't matter. That's right. Your top four is going to have your highest level of priority. Priority, yes. Right. And your brain is going to be able to continue that and remember that. So for me, it's learning the science of building and mm. the science of designing. Right. So, yes, it's going to be purposeful. Yes, I got this this on for a particular statement and for a particular reason. And that's to communicate to your subconscious without having to say a thing, because there's a science to going about being able to communicate, especially when you're dealing with rules that are meant to, you know, censor you. So how do you operate around those rules or with those rules? Right. Because we talk about breaking the rules, but the rules are just guides. Right. They can't stop you. It's just telling you what you need to do. There are rules in the universe. They say, well, you got to utilize the law of attraction. Nobody says, well, I got to break that uh, 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 law or that rule. You use it. You automatically think flow. They be like, damn, I wanted to do it a different way. No, people say, oh, this is the way. This is what I'll do. 
right? So for me, there's no way to put a blockade in front of me. You know what I'm saying? All you did was tell me what I need to step over. That's all. It was instruction. It wasn't a, a point of stopping. No, it is, a, it is a point of I acknowledge that. Okay, you said that we can't, we can't say certain things on social media. Well, let me say it this way then, right? <laughs> oh, well, you said they, they block these things. Well, thank you for that information. Yes. Because a highly <clears throat> intelligent man just takes everything, adds it into his mind. And let's go experiment until we get this right. Use it all. Thank you. You see, and see that thing? You see, we talk about the law of attraction. So people say, well, you know, this is a special thing you got to learn. I'm like, no, you don't. Everybody's got it. Everybody's attracting what they're thinking, mm -hmm. what they're feeling, what they're, you're attracting it. You have no idea. You're a magnet. If you know how much voltage and energy, you know, we're electromagnetic beings. We're bio -photo photonic. Yes, we're sir. pulling in energy from the entire universe. The universe is within our entire bodies. Mm -hmm. How does your heart pump blood? Mm. Um, the, the, your blood vessels could go around the world. How does your heart boom, boom, pump blood that fast? around the whole circumference of the planet. How does it do it? Mm. You, the science can't figure it out. They can't even figure out how the heart is pumping. But what's happening here is we have to realize that we're already attracting everything. So the law of attraction is always working. Once you look at the reticular activating system, the Ra system, then all of a sudden you begin to realize what's happening. The small part of your brain that's about the size of your finger, which has little pieces that goes up into every part of your brain, it is looking what it is sensing for what you're thinking about the most. Mm. So you start thinking about a green Volkswagen. You ain't even seen a green Volkswagen, not this particular color. Next few days, what do you see? The green Volkswagen. You start thinking about evil or something bad. That's all you notice is evil and bad. You start thinking about something beautiful and good. You start noticing beautiful and good things because the reticular activating system is focusing on what it is you're right. focusing on and you're building it and creating it. It's not about what the world is doing because see, the world is not the earth. People say, well, this is, man, he's the biggest such and such in the world. What world are you talking about? That ain't my world. The world is not the earth. The world mm -hmm. is your worldview. See, the words get funny. This language is twisted. It's in English. It's in English. It's an angle on it. People say, well, Dr. B, you be making up words all the time. Well, who made these words up? Where do you think this stuff came from? I'm doing what I do. And what I do is I create something out of nothing. Don't tell me I can't do something. English is so counterintuitive. It is. It's not even what your indigenous tongue. Makes no sense. It don't even, it does, you know, you tell, I, I, I do not. I cannot. I should not. This is two opposites. Why are you talking like that? I want to know what it is you desire. Give me it clear and clean what it is you desire. Not what you don't desire. Because when you say some words, it becomes twisted in your mind. You Even the energy coming from you, it's like we're in a wave of, it's like we're in an ocean. Mm -hmm. This is fluidic space. You talked about the dolphins. The dolphins are very special creatures. Mm. The, the, how can the dolphin communicate with every, one dolphin can communicate with every dolphin in the world as long as this is in the ocean. Mm. Because there's a place where the warm water up above and the cold water below come together. It's called the sound channel. Mm. Those two differentiating waters, there's, it's like a river there. Mm -hmm. It goes in there and it uses this snout and its head has got this thing called melon, which is full of melanin. And it makes certain sounds that travel on a sine wave that hit the entire planet. A dolphin can com communicate with every dolphin on the planet instantaneously. Well, you don't think you had this? You don't think, you think all the dolphins got it? The dolphins come from the same place we come from. This is, the Dogons talk about this, the Mer people. We're like the dolphins. We're, that's our relatives. You see, it's got to do with your mindset. See, we can talk telepathically if we shut up. People be talking stuff, they don't even, what, what are you saying? What are you trying to say? I, I remember I asked this, this rapper came to me one time. He says, yo, man, B, you know, I want to make a record, man. I'm going to make a CD. You know what I'm saying? I said, what you want to do? He said, I'm, I'm a rapper. I said, well, what's your image? What's your whole thing about? Well, you know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Boom. I come out. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the stage, man. I got the sneakers. I got the fly shit on. You know what I'm saying? It's like, boom, I'm there, man. The people are screaming, man. I said, but what is your thing, man? You know what I'm saying, man? It's just, they're going to go crazy. <laughs> I said, well, why don't you rap? He said, well, you, I, well, you, you're going to show me how to rap, right? I'm the producer. I don't teach you how to rap. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's what I'm not saying. This is crazy. You're just looking at those images on TV. Yeah. And you think those people are living the happiest life, but you don't, you don't realize that you have to be something. This yeah. is my thing is to be. That's, that's, you want the play without the work, man. 
They just want they to play without the work. They just have the stuff. And the stuff is going to make you crazy because most of the people I know that's super, super successful at that, they're out there. M- my clients, it got to the end. And this is why I had to stop seeing clients. I started having nothing but very wealthy clients because I wanted my, I started pricing myself. I wanted to price myself out of the game because it was making me crazy because your subconscious doesn't know things outside of it are not it. Your subconscious cannot perceive or conceive of anything outside of self. When you see something, the subconscious is that's happening in us. You feel it. You don't realize it, but it has an effect on you. So I said, you know, listening to these clients, I've been doing this for like 10 years. I'm about to lose my mind because I hear them and I'm starting to have daydreams and nightmares and daymares. Mm, mm. When it get to daymares, bro, we got a problem. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I said, well, let me go to $350 an hour. That way they won't come. I got more clients at $350 an hour than I did at $75 an hour. Mm-hmm. They was coming like crazy. I said, whoa, this is nuts. But what I realized, I had to let this go. I had to not do this anymore. I said, now I would like to teach the people how to balance their own subconscious. I could teach you five techniques right now that would change your whole life. Five things. If you do them every day and don't talk about how hard it is, just do what the hell I'm telling you to do. But we talk. We got too much talk already in our heads. We already heard what's real. Man, man, I don't need to listen to this. On YouTube said, YouTube said what? We we didn't have YouTube. You remember when we started researching? What? No, YouTube. We was in libraries. Mm-hmm. We was getting books. We was getting papers on the corner, eating bean pie. We was hanging out, learning from the, from the pool hall, yeah. listening to the brothers at the, at the barber shop, watching the drummers, listening to the ball, the brothers playing the ball, listening to the DJ at the club, not play what was commercial. I used to go to them clubs in New York and New Jersey. They weren't playing what was commercial. They was playing what was not commercial. But see, that's Taking the, the people into a trance state and hit. they were being totally emotive and creative. Right. They were expressing themselves. Now people are modeling. And now that modeling is creating these people that what I call our artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence ain't just these computers. Mm. Artificial intelligence started with Santa Claus. Mm. What you told your childish? You told your child. Do you know how upset I was when I found out what the truth was that my parents told me this? Yeah. And what, what, there's a there's a, a fairy gonna come through my wall tonight to get my tooth. Well, we they people and leave some money the under my pillow. Yeah. What? I need to take all my teeth out because I need to buy a lot of things. Yeah. It's crazy. But you love you want to love your children. You don't have to tell them some lies because you're teaching them how to be liars and flatliners and create all these things that you don't need. And it becomes now, a family myths, tradition. Myths are powerful. A myth is a story that may not have actually happened. But you can use it. Most of your holy books are like myths. You could use this as a lesson for your life, whether they happen or not. So these are things that we can use that are tools that are there for us. But if we're waiting for somebody else to tell us, that's the artificial intelligence. You see what I'm saying? And we we buy into it because that's the new thing. I'm not saying not to use artificial intelligence. I'm saying you already been in artificial intelligence. Well, yeah, shit. It's You've been, been artificially inseminating. Most, most people... For for me, like if I'm equating that to a human being, it's like in school it's artificial intelligence because you're not teaching a person how to think, which to me would be a true intelligence, right? You're teaching them to copy thinking, right? And that's what artificial intelligence does. It mimics thinking, right? So you're taking the patterns and the the rhythm and the learning process of a human being, right? To try to get similar or the same results. But in school, what they tell you to remember things and then you get great grades to do that because now they let them know that you can be a great slave for somebody else. But the true art of thinking is if you show somebody something, you tell me what it means. Yes. I can't judge you and say that. Oh, I just need to see like there was a child. What was it? Um, I seen something. It was something about a test and they had asked the child to come up with some sort of answer and it wasn't the exact answer that it was supposed to be. It was a funny one, but it was like, you know, sarcasm, but it was still correct in the sense that they used their mind at least. Yes. Yeah. They didn't figure it out the way that you wanted them to, but they was thinking. The point is improve upon the strips of that child ability to think, yes. not for them to think what you want them to think and then tell them they're smart if you do what I do. Yes. Right. That makes absolutely no sense. And that's why this generation is so rebellious and our generation is so rebellious because You told me to do things that will give me conditional success, 
right? I want unconditional success. I want to be able to create success on my own regardless. Yes. I don't want it to be based on a degree, based on who I follow, based on a grade that I get. I want it to be completely based on my ability to utilize my mind. Yes. Self-mastery, self-awareness, right? I'm become my own slave. I work for myself and now I can be successful because I have the ability to achieve, set upon goal that I said I wanted to do. So now you're creating human beings with functioning minds to pull out the best inside of them to go out in the world and showcase their capabilities, right? So getting to that point of like, let us be alive again, because we're not reliving no more, right? Human beings are all tired all across the planet Earth, tired of being subjugated under systems that make no sense. And we allow vampires to just utilize our energy as their resource to produce labor so that they can live higher than we ever could working for them for the rest of our lives. I see goddamn posts where McDonald's workers been working there for 30 years that can't even smile. You know what I'm saying? Holding up a little plaque working for 30 years. The boss is happy as hell. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Happy as hell that you didn't want much for your life. That's right. Happy as hell that you were trained to work for them as yes. a drone, right? The rest of your life. Not happy because you achieved a dream. Right. Too, Not so. happy because you're living life. You get to travel the world. Yes. Not happy because you live life in joy. No, these damn demons, devils and vampires get people to sign contracts and literally steal the best part of your life. They steal your art. They steal your happiness. They steal your joy. And the rest of people's lives is just trying to figure out how to cope with the loss because some people don't know how to get past that to recreate again. The thing is, is that. We allowed it. Most of what's happening, we allow. The devil is in us. We allowed a lot of things. We let it happen. That was your, that was your signature. Did you sign here? Mm. Remember they asked me, so was the, is this your signature? I looked, I was like, uh, and that's a sign of your nature. <laughs> if your nature is that there's victims out there, right? You're going to be like that nymph and stay in the right. water forever. The, when the, 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 the dragonfly doesn't see victimhood. It doesn't see that the world is crazy. It's brand new. It's going to spread its wings. It's totally in love. And when the dragonflies make make love, they look like a heart. They're not afraid. But if we say that the world is terrible, the universe is not, the cosmos is not a friendly place. It's not. We could change everything based on a thought. We could actually walk on water. We could actually, we're actually flying through the universe on a, a spaceship. We talking about the mother plane, the the mother wheel. This is it. We're on it. So hold on, but but I I don't want to go too far off. But into that point, you're talking about the mother plane, the wheel. Now, I think I commented on the post about some some being that came from outer space, and people was like, "Keys, you too smart to believe in outer space. Do you believe in outer space? Yes. It starts with inner space. Mm. If I get a microscope right now, and I take one of your cells. And I, because when I was teaching at UCLA, which was interesting because I didn't have an education and they asked me to come teach at the university, blew my mind. I went, y'all sure you got right. the right guy? I wanted to see that, that, that microscope, that, 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 that huge microscope that could magnify crazy times. And I looked at a cell. It was a cancer cell. We brought up the magnification and all of a sudden we got to this place where the cancer was gone. And the guy says, keep on doing it. Keep on, keep on bringing up the magnification. Then all of a sudden, all the parts of the cells were gone. Then all of a sudden, I saw the Big Dipper. I saw Sirius. I saw Orion's belt. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? And the, 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 the professor's laughing. He says, isn't that deep? As above, so below. What is inside those cells at the smallest level is everything. It's the same. I know, but I'm so saying, do you, space, do you believe that like man can actually like leave Earth and like space travel outside in a vehicle? You about to be on some stuff now. See, you didn't ask me some <laughs> questions. See, let me tell you something. Right? Ain't no hoes, bar. You can go whichever direction you want to go, brother. Ever since I was a child, I've had experiences. Okay. Talk to me. They said I was crazy. Mm. I saw beings. I see things in this room right now that I wouldn't talk. I had to learn how to be quiet. Mm. Mother said, shh. Don't say what you're seeing. This universe is teeming. There are so many beings in this room right now on different frequencies. We just, you said it in the beginning. We don't have the frequency spectrum to sense it. So what we believe is a doubt. You don't know for sure. This universe is nothing like you think it is. 
It's an omniverse. It's, it's dimensions upon dimensions upon dimensions. I have actually been places and met beings. I remember Dick Gregory told me, he says, well, you know, one day I want you to meet my friends. I said, who my, who's your friends? He said, it's these guys. They don't have no navel. So what you mean? He said, yeah, they let me know. This is how I know a lot of stuff is going on because these cats come see me. I, let me call them. And he calls his wife. He says, Lil, Lil, got to be down here. Call them, call such and such. And they had these funny names that sound like sounds. I said, no, Dick, I don't want to meet them. I, don't, I done seen too much, bro. He says, no, you need to meet these cats. I never really met them until it was at his memorial. And there was this dude with a black hat. He had all black on. Look, his skin looked pasty. And I looked at him and he looked at me and he turned his head and looked at me like this. And he looked at me and I looked away. I was like, oh shit, is that those beings? I looked back, he was gone. He was on the other side of the <laughs> casket. <laughs> yeah. I've been seeing stuff like that all my life. Mm. What you think is real is based on a construct. We are cosmic beings. We are not from here. We're not even here. We're light energy projected into these avatars to have this experience. We asked for this. This is like, this is like a whole video game. This is an obstacle course we asked to do. We asked for your parents. You asked for your experiences, that accident, that drama, all that stuff you went through, you asked for it. Why? You ready for this? Because mm. when I had my quote unquote near death experiences three times trying to get off the planet, Found out something. Masters always attempt to stay masters. So they test themselves. I'm going to go fight an alligator. Man, you're the Kung Fu master, man. You done did. You done. Why are you? He's going to go fight a dragon. Why would you go fight a dragon? Because a master must always be on their game. They're always testing themselves. We're always pushing the envelope. I'm doing something music. I'm working on a musical project right now, which I can't name. It's one of the biggest musical projects on the planet. They call me. It is with the, like, the largest artist of all times ever. They asked me to come. We need you. We need you. I'm like, huh? Who, me? Because I'm like, who? Well, you want to do it or not? Yes. I was able to say yes. A lot of people don't know when to say yes because they're saying, they saying yes to too many things. You got to learn how to say no to certain things and learn how to say yes to the things that's going to help you become a master. You got to push, push the envelope and you got to realize that it takes pain. It takes pressure for that diamond to become a diamond. Mm -hmm. It just can't be no lump of coal forever. It's going to take heat in many years. So the more we've been through, I tell folks, the people who've been through the most, they're masters. We're mastering this thing. Mm -hmm. You may have to go and come back and go and come back and try and try and try to keep that mastery happening. This life, this one thing is not what you think it is. Do you know how many beings are in your body right now? You think they know they're in your body? They, they're on a planet or they're in a universe, an omniverse, living in your body. Your mitochondria are living alien creatures that don't even need your body to live. I was like, whoa, what are y'all talking about? They said, yeah, see those little things, mitochondria? Because they, they figured out 1987A when they saw the, uh, the, the uh, 1987 supernova, 1987A, when that light hit the planet, that's when the genes lit up. When mm -hmm. they can finally, you know, calculate all the genes. They think, we got it. We got the genome. Human genome pro project is done. And the brother said, wait a minute. There's something else here. What's these things? The mitochondria. The women carry it. The men have it too, but the women pass it. What is it? The genes of the mitochondria cannot be figured out. It's so massive. These little creatures that take energy, they make the energy of your body. Mm -hmm. They are like alien. They don't even need you to live. They just got together and said, you want to, we're going to hang out with you for a while. What you, what you doing, bro? How you doing, man? Wow, you crazy. You about to do that? You about to jump out? You about to ride that roller coaster? Then you watch the news every year, uh, over 5,000 roller coasters crash and people die at the, but you want to do it. Let's go. They ride with you because they don't die. They don't believe in death. We are living in multiple universes at one time. Now on that thought right there, because as you, as you were speaking, you sparked the thought. And this is where I feel like people can get a tangible sense of understanding the multiple universe theory, right? is that in your, every time we do something, we create a loop. We create a self that has to live through that forever as long as we remember it, 
right? In our mind, we have all of these memories. We can go directly to a memory real quick and access it. That means that it's playing all the time. It's happening now. You're just not always. It's like having a TV on, right? Yes. And there's a character stuck in there playing that role over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And over. That's a universe onto itself. You can go in your mind and there's a version of me that will have to live this conversation out for eternity. And anytime I want to access this, I can go back in my brain and I can be that person. Right. And so sometimes when a person go through terrible experiences, you can literally kill memories, which is killing parts of yourself. Right. So now. You know, let's say you hit your head and I forgot everything that I've done. I just erased those beings right out of the universe. I just erased. They don't exist no more. Right. And what happens to a lot of people is what becomes the most prominent is their negative memories and or experiences. So that part of themselves becomes more dominant, even though they lived the life where probably 90 percent of it was actually good. But the memory didn't entrench hard enough to become a memory that you can constantly go back. That becomes a dominant layer that becomes you. Right. So it's like you you get to build, you know, uh, um, stronger versions of yourself consistently through every experience so that you can be that consistently. Because if you forget the last five years, then who are you? Right. If you forget the last however many years you've been on this planet and now you're here, then you're day one being again. You're not the same person. We see that with people who so calledly go crazy. But it's not that they went crazy in the sense that you may believe that everything that they doing is just completely irrational. They just only have access to one part of themselves. We are whole human beings and we need access to all of our experiences to be ourselves. We need access to all parts of us. Right. And sometimes we forget the part of us that made us who we are. So what does the psychologist do? Right. What does the therapist do? They take us back in time so that we can access a part of ourselves that we forgot. And that part of yourself was operating right in the back end of you and telling you what to do. And you was denying that part, which is considered to be the shadow self. So when you are able to, you know, go within yourself and access full parts and be aware of that and be like, you know what? It's kind of like in the movie, you know, everything all at once. You taking all versions of yourself, say, hey, here, come to me. I'm like Kang. You know what I'm saying? I don't deny that none of my parts exist. I see all of them. Right. And they say, you know what? I'm going to merge with all of y'all. I know some of y'all crazy, some of y'all cool, some of y'all funny, some of y'all chill, some of you like to overeat, some like to be on some Zen Buddhist fasting. All of that's me. You know what I mean? But this is the part of me that I need right now. It might be wartime. Time for the soldier side to come out. Yes. Let me remember all the times I was whooping all this ass. You feel me? I was in the streets mobbing. Them the layer of thoughts I need right now. I don't need peaceful keys right now. You be on some, you be doing, you be too chill. I need wartime keys. You feel me? So it's like, you have to learn to literally access different parts of yourself. And it's not who you are presently, but it's who you can become once you merge with those different aspects. And so if you go through life saying that, all right, at this period in time, what version of yourself do you need? We have to be intentional about what what dimensions and portals we want to open up within ourselves. Say, yo, I need that you go into all your memory. You need to study right now. Go into all your memories. If you study and what it's like to when you got that clear focus, when you wanted something, absorb those memories, allow that to become dominant in your presence of who you are. I need the smartest, nerdiest version of keys right now because I need to study. You don't need the person that wants to be outside trying to study. No, that person going to always want to be who they are. No. Download that person that wants to goddamn be in the house doing nothing. That's the person that's at peace that can sit there for hours and do what you need them to do. And then when that part is done, bring the hustler back in. The hustler wants to be outside executing from this information. So most people don't know how to tap into those different dimensions of self so that the operator that's in a present is doing what's necessary for the task that needs to be completed. You said the operator, the captain. The captain needs to know everything. You need to know who's on the boat. You need to understand your body. What you, what you might have hitchhikers on the boat. You got some pirates that want to take over the boat. You understand what I'm saying? You need to realize first that you're the captain. You're not one of the workers on your boat. It's your mm. vessel. You see, the next thing is, is that we have got to the point where we talk so much about what we do. It's not true. Mm. 
We keep talking about what we do. I can guarantee we don't know that many people. If you count all the people that you know, it's, it's, it's seven, eight, or ten billion, and they lie about that too. How many? How do you know how many people's on the planet? We, I didn't do the census. Yeah. How do you know? They keep making up stories of so, so many people, and this is the percentage of, and this is the life expectancy. How do you know what I expect out of my life? You don't tell me mm. what my life expectancy is. You know, nine out of twelve black people are going to black men are going to get prostate cancer. You want to tell me that and make me create that? Mm. What I am saying is that we have to take charge by first knowing what it is we desire and creating a spell breaker. We allowed ourselves to be under a spell. We allowed ourselves to be divided. When you get this is when you get power. I allow you to create anger in me. I allowed you to make me feel like blah, blah, blah. Once you say I allowed it, your power comes back. Mm. I got power to change this. I'm an alchemist. I can change this particular moment. I could disappear right now. and You won't see me. This is what a lot of people, a lot of indigenous people, you think that they're gone. And we keep talking about what they're doing in the world. They're not. Mm. They're only doing it to the people who are aware of that particular construct that was created by them mm. to keep you in the state of losing. Once you say, I am a winner. I am an achiever. Once you start saying, I allow myself to be such and such. And here's the next level. You get into the spirituality thing, right? And you just took the church and converted it. Now you got these new leaders in the conscious community or they're spiritual leaders and you're following them. That's okay. That's a certain level. At least you done got out of the thing you was in. And you're moving to the next level. But then you got to get to the point where I have become a teacher. I'm not looking for a prophet. The prophets ain't coming. You got to be the prophet. The prophet is in you if you know about it. Like you talked about the, you know, the mastermind group. So every week I have a mastermind meeting. Who do I have it with? You see me sit in the room. You say, he's, you know, lost his mind. Guess who's in the room? The beings in my life, whether they're here physically or not, that I respect their words. Mm -hmm. And I sit there and I say, I'm going to go meet with 19 keys. What do you think? And I just sit there and I just be quiet. And the notion pops up. Talk about time. I didn't know we was going to talk about time. When you said time, you didn't know it. I almost snapped right here when you said something about time. That's what they told me. Time. This thing is about time. It's about the timing. When to do something. When not to do it. That's one of the first questions you asked me. The mastermind group are beings in your mind that you've created, that you're channeling. We're channeling, man. Yeah. I mean, after the 1900s, we went into the end of times. We went into what I call the beginning of times. Beginning and so check it out. For me, you can't have it's, it's a beginning without an end. Thing. It is. It you is. can't have a beginning I, without I, an end. I think I wrote that in my book. Um, there is no ending, just a new beginning. A new beginning, right? Everything and, changes as of today. But that's the nineteen because there's there's and whether you know you believe it to be in sync with like Ethiopian calendars and say who or who to create. When you have a world collective in agreement with something, right? It constitutes a reality. So there, whether it was forced or not, so the world collective that operates on a Julius calendar, right, agreed that it was 1900, right? Now, this won't come about again, right? Those 19s, if you go through the era, of what was happening during 1900 all the way to 1999, right? Go think about all of those eras that existed throughout that time, right? When 2000 came, all of that collapsed, right? Now we're living in... All times, if you will. Right. Look at how people dress. Right. They dress like they're pulling from every era on the yes. planet. Yes. Right. We have technology from all of the imaginations from all women and men that ever thought about that. <sighs> right. We are literally living in, you know, the the because whether you call it the end or the beginning, it is a new cycle of time. Yes. The 19s are over. It collapsed. And now the 2000s was a, a restart, right? That 500 year period of America, the end of an empire disease began, right? And we see, you know, the possibility of new construction taking place today. The way we think about, they said this generation is a generation with the least amount of belief in spirituality and or God. This, this is the least amount of Christians, the least amount of churchgoers, right? And it's not that they don't have a belief. It's just that they are 
they are redefining their relationship with these beliefs. Right. They redefining their relationship with what God is to them. They're redefining their relationship with what these words even mean, because they believe that the person that gave them didn't have the best intentions. They believe that the rituals won't work. If something works, you're not stopping it. If you go somewhere and they say, hey, you do one, two, three, four, you pray like this, you walk like this, you talk like this, and you get an extreme result, you ain't never going to stop that. You better stay there. This That's generation right. stopped doing things because they wouldn't get no results. Yes. So they said, wait a minute, why would I can, that would make me crazy, keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So this is a generation that is becoming sort of like science and let me experiment, let me try something else, let me find a new way. One of the things is we just so spoiled that we got so many ways to try. Right. And and that can be a, 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 a harmful thing, because by the time you actually, you know, get to the point where you may be getting to the right thing, you didn't try all the wrong things so much that you you got damn fried. And the reality of it is, is that the right thing is super obvious. It's just when you in your rebellious years, like the world is back in 18 years, you started off as children again. You want to try all these unnecessary things rather than listen to wisdom. See. Right now, we can do it all. Right now, there's real music happening. It's just in the underground. You can't listen to the mainstream telling you what a song is. It's just a loop going around and around. You don't have no crescendo. don't have no mm. orgasm. It's just the same thing on and on and on and on and on. If that's your reality, then you go with it. You could do anything right now. So why not tap into what who you truly are, which is a creative being? But to do that, you got to put on blindfolds. You see what I'm saying? You got to be like three frogs. The three frogs leave the village, right? And they go for a hop and they fall into this deep, deep hole, right? And they can't get out. And one of them starts saying, oh my God, we're going to die. We're going to drown when it rains. We're going to die. The next day, that frog is dead. The other frog keeps hopping, trying to get out the hole. The second day, the other, the other frog says, oh my God, it's true. We're not going to make it. We're going to die. We're going to die. That night, that frog is dead. The other frog keeps hopping, keeps hopping. Mm. Now the frogs back at Frog Village, they didn't had a funeral. Or the, or they, they, these, they're dead. Yeah. Couldn't made it. But then all of a sudden it starts to rain. And the rain comes and the other frog starts floating, right? And two weeks later, he comes hopping back into Frog Village. Mm. And they say, oh my God, you're alive? What happened? He says, huh? Huh? They say, well, what happened to you? We thought you were dead. He says, I, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I don't, I, I'm deaf. I don't listen to you. So I don't hear lack, limitation, not enoughness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be blind and deaf and dumb to this foolishness because I am a creator. I am studying. And when you start looking at animation, emanation, one of the original beliefs was when everybody thought that everything was alive. He had respect for everything and everyone. Everything was alive. It's called animation. It's one of the first beliefs. When you go back, you say everything is alive. That bowl is alive. Why would you be holding it if it wasn't alive? Why would you have that crystal if it wasn't alive? That hat, the clothes, these cameras, these things are all living entities. So this is the way I see it. We are all aliens. We're all space travelers. We're star travelers. We are the beginning, the end, and the middle. We are everything. And it depends on whether we elevate, right? Or whether we descend. That's up to us. We can, we got to stop blaming people. Get rid of the victim archetype. See, that just makes it easy. Well, I didn't do it. The devil made me do it. My homeboys, I was getting off drugs when my homeboys came and got me. The white man did this. The black man did that. It's, we blame, blame, blame. So you lose power. Every time you blame and become a victim, you lose electricity. See, you can't get to a higher elevation because your attitude has a lot to do with your altitude. But there's a difference between the studying of a source of something and the blaming of something, right? Because, you know, it, it, it allows you to have, you know, the power because, you know, knowledge empowers you. Once you know where something comes from and you know the root of something, because a lot of people are in, you know, ignorance and not knowing why, right? And God is in the details of that. Why? Why was it done? That's where you get that truth. That's where you get that right. You know what I mean? I know why this happened. So now I know why it won't happen. Because now I know why it happened, right? It empowers you with understanding. And now you are equipped with the ability to do something different. So when you look at it and you say, 
Why generations of my family believe this? You go and say, oh, they were taught this. Yes. This I was following this ritual because they followed it, but now I know the root of why they did it. Yes. So now I'm not going to do that. I'm not a victim. I just now have the knowledge of self yes. to know what to do next. So my father, my thing was my father was against me. I wasn't going to college. I wasn't doing nothing he wanted me to do. I'm going to be a musician. Mm. He was pissed. Yeah. Upset. Yeah. He treated me a certain way. Versus the way he treated my brothers and my, the rest of my family. I figured he didn't like Why me. he treat you like that? He treat me that way. I'm going to tell you why. I was pissed all my life. My father, man. <laughs> and one day, I was doing a subconscious alignment session. When I was learning the technique, you got to work on yourself. And I figured it out. Mm. My father was a master. My father was one of the first black engineers in Connecticut to work for a major corporation. My father could use divining rods to find water and oil under the ground. My father was, he's like in the history books. A lot of my family is in the books. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I realized he was teaching me mastery. Mm. He gave me the tough side. He argued with me. He fought with me, made me test myself. The only thing that made me change my relationship with my father was when I came home one day with the book Isis Papers by Francis Quest Wilson. Because we'd always talk about, he said, well, you ain't from Africa, you're from the whole world. You're a universal being. I didn't want to hear that. We from Africa. We done went through this. He said, how you know you were slaves? Where's the slave boats? How many slaves were slaves? And we argued back and forth because I was a militant. I, woke, I went to bed and I threw the Isis Papers on the book, on the, on the table. And I knew we was going to get up and argue. Because we got energy out of this. He'd get his Maxwell House coffee. We'd be sitting there right fighting. I got up and he says, hey, how you doing, son? <laughs> I said, well, I'm doing good. He said, I said, yeah. I said, what's happening? He says, oh, that's a good book. I really like that book. I says, yeah, see what I'm trying. I'm already arguing. Yeah. <laughs> he says, that was a good book. He says, in fact, on page 300 and such and such, the thing she said, I says, well, dad, when did you read the book? He says, this morning over coffee. What do you mean over coffee? He says, do you speak? You speed read, right? I tried to teach you. I said, what do you mean? He says, Speed reading, you just rub your hand over, your, your subconscious picks up all the words. I read the whole book. Ask me any questions. I said, but wait a minute, you agreed with the lady? He says, yes, this lady's powerful. I said, I thought you wasn't into this. He says, you had your own mindset of who I was. That's not who I was. I've been attempting to teach you to be a draftsman, a journeyman, a master. And to do that, I have to be tough. Mm. This is all happening in my head. I said, wait, my father loved me. My father really taught me the person that I am today is because he tested me. The time he slapped me across the room, I was saying some stuff that was foul. Mm. Let me tell you something. I could feel the feeling in my tongue now. Watch, watch, watch. It was, my mouth was so dry. It was like Jeez. fan was in that sucker. I was like, but I was saying something that I should. I was disrespectful, not only to him, but to myself. Mm. So sometimes the stuff that's testing you is going to make you more powerful. or You're going to fold. No, I mean, I had a father like that. He wasn't the most advocate vocally, but, you know, he taught in ways of observation. Yes. Right. As as I was able to observe him, that's where I learned the most. Seeing what he did, how other people treated him, how he treated other people was the test. And, you know, learning directly from your father is a, is a very grateful source. Right. See, Everybody doesn't get that experience on this planet, unfortunately. And that probably particularly, you know, fathers you know, our medicine men, fathers are teachers, right? When you're able to, and, and you have to understand the difference because you said something key. You said he was teaching you, you had to be tough. A master teacher, if he wants you to be a master, yes, there's a way of teaching. Yes. Right. So in that way, there's a way I have to instill because I need this to never be forgotten. If I do it softly, you may forget it. But if I do it in a way where you might even resist, you remember the emotions of the resistance, yes. what you were resisting, right? You remember everything about it. Now this emotion is there. If I yell at you, I just didn't jump at you. Now that memory is ingrained. But if if I'm like, let's, let's do this, son. Oh, you don't want to? Okay. Take your soft ass over there then. No. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get your ass over here, boy, I don't care what you thought you was going to do. This what you, look, look, do this, do that, and then do that, then do that again. And when you're tired of doing it, do it one more again. You know what I'm saying? And you will understand the lesson, not in the moment, but over time. Dick Gregory and I were sitting on the curb. I worked with Dick Gregory for like 10 years. Mm. He, I became his herbalist. Yeah. Uh, he became my I would love to have Dick Gregory on high level oh, conversations. Man. And he was sitting on a curb because he was in some movie, man. Yeah. We sitting in this neighborhood, man, and it's rough. 
I said, man, you know, as criminals and murderers, and we just, 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 just sit on the curb and be quiet. So we're sitting there. I'm worried. I'm sitting there rocking. I says, and he says, brother, he says, what's going on? I said, nothing, Mr. Gregory. So we're sitting there quiet. And he says, will you shut up? I said, I'm not talking. He says, you are. He's like, I can feel the brain waves in your head. You're thinking too much. So you can't absorb right now. Mm. How many times did the dog across the street bark? Mm. How many times did that blue car drive by? Did you notice the star that's twinkling down on us right now? Because yeah. you're thinking too much. You're too busy doing minding other people's business. You got to mind your business and get into a quiet zone so you can absorb what's here right now. I'm like, what? Another time we was together and I started saying some stuff and he grabbed me by my throat. Mm. Threw me up against the wall. I'm like, what? This man just grabbed me, threw me up against the wall? I choked up. I never forgot that. He says, your throat, your fifth chakra, that is your transformer. Energy comes from up above. It comes down through your chakras. It goes through the throat and turns into physical energy. It transforms into physical energy and it goes into the body. Then earth energy comes up through your body, up through your chakras, and it goes to the throat and becomes spiritual or cosmic energy. Your throat, what you say, it becomes matter. Your, your material is based on your words and your thinking. You see, you need to watch what you're saying and how you're expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. And he said, Dr. B, you know, I probably won't be seeing you no more. He came to my lecture, right? He said, I probably won't be seeing you no more. I said, why? He said, because I had read this book, Murder by Injection. I was pissed. I had on army boots and the mud cloth jacket. And I, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm half Black Panther, but half, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I had, it was all mixed up, but I was pissed. Yeah. And I'm naming the corporations that control the seeds, the grocery stores, the gas stations. I'm naming them. I'm on stage drawing this whole map about the world and who controls it. And he just, he used to come to my lectures and laugh because I used to be fun. And he sat there and just looked at me. This time, when we was done, he comes over and says, yeah, Dr. B, this is probably the last time I'll be seeing you. I said, where are you going? He says, I'm not going nowhere. You are. <laughs> so where, where are you? He said, they're coming to kill your ass. You're going to die. It ain't going to be pretty. I said, what are you talking about? He says, you better erase that shit on that board. Stop talking about them people. Go back to having some fun. Give people a way out. Stop showing that you they, that all you're doing is making a matter. Yeah. Show them a different way. Otherwise, I won't be seeing you no more. I'm like, these are some real lessons. Yeah. And he says, music. Always put music in what you do, Dr. B. You're yeah. a musician. You're a drummer. That's why I'm working on my album. You know about rhythm. You know about everything. We just we did some songs here today. We oh, need to yeah. record. Yeah. You know, I produce. Yeah. For real. I don't just do a loop. Yeah. I make the loop. I use the real instruments, the real sounds, the real rhythm that change and grow and expand. I, I don't even really work with too many people no more. I work with you. Yes, sir. We'll go to the studio and cut some stuff. And I'm telling you, there's a way to put frequencies in music that people have to say yes. Mm -hmm. There's a way to even in marketing, because I used to teach people marketing. There's a way to, to write your marketing plan up where people have to say yes. There's languages. There's eight things that people have to say yes to biologically. Mm. No matter what. It ain't. It's on sale. That ain't it. People want to be part of a group. They want to be part of a crowd. They want to be sexual. They want to feel sexual. They want to feel like they're helping the family. There's words that you can use in your talk. When I'm speaking, when I do a live talk, I'm anchoring the stage. I walk over to this side of the stage. Everybody's eyes follow me and I only say certain things. Then I walk to that side of the stage and I only say certain things. Then I stand in the center of the stage and I, I'm, this is called anchoring the spot. I speak from a certain place with a certain tone. I'm using frequency. Then I step to the forward part of the stage and I do this with my hands and the folks are gone. At that point, I ain't got to say nothing because what I just did was told your subconscious, I love you. You love yourself. You feel me, don't you? This is going to be fun. Let's go. There's techniques that we learn that people don't know how to use today. When I'm speaking, I'm talking in tones. You see, I get all excited. Mm -hmm. I'm moving energy. Dr. B, you wild. Won't you calm down? No, I ain't going to calm down. This is the only time we may ever get to have this particular conversation. Mm. This ain't going to ever happen again. You see what I'm saying? I, I got a text. Man, me, me, just come to see 19 Keys in Arcadia. Arcadia? Why am I out in Arcadia? Ain't that, wait, wait, I thought he'd be in, in, up in Beverly Hills. You know what I'm saying? I'm guessing. And I said, oh, shoot. Arcadia. Ark. Mm. He's in the ark. And then I started, when I was driving, I looked at the mountains. There's an ark in the mountains right over here. My first, I have a, I have a, a recording uh, 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 a machine that is the recording machine that Michael Jackson cut off the wall on. I own the mm -hmm. only one. I have the actual machine and some of the microphones from the session and everything, right? 
I bought it in Arcadia. Mm. It's a place not too far from here. Mm. Every time I went there, something matched because it's a thing. You know what I'm saying? These mountains. You know what that means, right? They's creating these whole, you know, there's vortexes and energy moving. Doctor, you know what that means, right? What's that mean? It means that I'm supposed to own that instrument that Michael Jackson gave you. Well, you know, it's here. It's like it's in Pasadena right I'm, now. I'm reading this. They're working on it right now. Arcadia. See? Arcadia. Arcadia. So we think keys. we think arcade. Michael Jackson. Arcade means game. No. A arc is how energy jumps but doctor, from one do place you, do to you the agree other. agree, though? That you're supposed to own it? Yes, sir. You was trying to own my life one day, too, <laughs> wasn't you? So this man with his own thing, he took my light. He says, man, Dr. B, you got to get another one. No, you got to get into this said, light. So what what's this light, man? So what you mean? You're going to own my light? No, you're going to give me my light back. Oh, man, this is my light. You can get another one. I said, brother, you have no idea who you're talking to. Yes, sir. Because I believe in you. That's why. Well, I don't believe in you. I know you. Oh, I know you. There you go. See, I know you. I can don't get believe one. in you. I know you. Yes, sir. You see, and I feel you. Yes, sir. You're me and I'm you. There's no difference. Can I see the light? No, you can't see my light. You're always trying to get my light. You well, can't just, take my light. Put some, put some light on that water. What there. you going to do? I just want some structured water. Okay. That's all. That's all. I'm not going to keep it, brother. I'll tell you what. We, let's structure the people. Can we structure the people? That's what we do. I'm trying to give them a demonstration. Well, okay. But you can't demonstrate it like this. I got to okay. show you how the demonstration go. Well, let me you know You can't control then. the demonstration now. I'm just flowing, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> so this light, what it does is it opens up the quantum field, mm. right? So- there's a natural energy that's attempting to flow through us that we've dammed up. What this light does, it has this, this, these, these particles of energy that come from the quant this quantum physics, you know, technology in here. When you shine this light, it opens up the quantum field to structure energy. Anything you shine this light at on, it changes the note. So watch this. I don't want to touch your hats. No, it's all good. Look, I don't mind. This is yours, brother. You, this, oh, hey, I, listen, I, I man. We're hats, man. I'm going to wear yours. You know what I'm saying? Okay, watch this. I'm watch. Listen to this note. I don't know if you can hear it, but listen carefully. <laughs> listen. You hear that? Mm-hmm. If you listen to after the note, there's a. Mm. First, it was going. When I hit, when after I did this, it slowed down the vibration and made it more coherent. Do another one. Do another one. Well, let's do another. Let's do. Let's let's do another one. I'll show you a different one. Come on, stand up. You know I'm saying, and grab my fist. Grab my fist. Chin oh. levels. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push down and you resist. Yes, sir. Okay. Don't let me pull you. You ready? Be strong. Okay? See how you're off balance, right? Mm -hmm. Try again. Be strong. He's getting even stronger, is he? He, 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 he on television. <laughs> <laughs> okay, watch this. What we did was just change the frequency. Let's see what happens. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Grab my fist mm -hmm. and be strong. I'm not going to lie, I feel stronger. No cap. I don't know if he yeah. put less pressure or something. I'm not gonna lie. Just I'm gonna put all the pressure. You could try, but I'm not gonna lie. I don't what know. just happened? I felt stronger. All we did was allow the natural frequencies in you to flow that you've been blocking as a human being on Earth. Mm. That's what the light does. Let's do it again. Let me see the. Let me see the. Let me see the light. What you want to do with it now? I'm gonna try yeah, it on you. you. Now hands out like this. Yeah. You gonna put it on me? Yeah. I don't know if it's going to work like, like this. Just straight. Just straight. So, I'm going to do it again. All I'm doing is putting the pressure there. Now, let me see. See, you have this heat loose. You know, like a suspect. I'm going to show you why. stronger now. Let me show you why. When you do this kinesiology, put the hand out like this. Put your hand on their shoulder. So you got to have both sides. Electromagnetic energy has got to be flowing. So you put one here. Mm -hmm. Then you only use two fingers. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see chin level. Chin level this way. Look this way, straight ahead. And eyes focus down. Okay? Now be strong. Okay? Think yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Eyes got to be focused down. 
be strong. I say, no, 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 no. And be strong. You feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Now watch this. We're going to turn your no's into a yes. So you were weak on, on no, right? Mm -hmm. Give me a flashback in St. Louis streets. Okay. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Eyes focused down. The eyes have to be focused down to get the kundalini to flow. No, 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 no. You're locked. Mm. Nothing can unseal you right now. That's a factory. Nothing can unseal you because the light is opening up what they call the quantum field. Mm. So this who? is German technology. Okay, German. The German. A German musician. Actually, he's he's the guy who actually went to Germany and found all these 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 things that that they used back in the day during the the war and all that to protect their energy. So I have devices that I'm wearing and everything that help to, they don't block radiation. They change the frequency. So all you got to do is change the frequency. So what we're going to do is give everybody here who's in the audience mm -hmm. a gift. Mm. So all you got to do is check your energy. And you say, well, you know, give yourself, give yourself a, a number. Say, you know, I'm feeling my energy's at about a five or my energy's at a 10. Low energy, if you don't have, you have, if you have least, if you have a lot of disagreeable energy, it's a low number. If you have a lot of what they call agreeable energy, it's a high number. Okay? So give yourself a number, right? Whatever number you say, write it down. Remember it. Then I'm going to shine the light on the entire people. All the millions of people, right, are going to get a little bit of the light. Mm. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. You all in the audience. Does your number change? I'm not gonna lie, I feel the same. You feel the same? No, you said, did your number change? Did your number change? You feel, you feel the same? My energy level? Yeah. yeah. Your number. You feel the, the number same? you had in your no, head. My number the same. Okay. okay, now you know why? Your hands are crossed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that boy, Dr. B, serious. Because what you did was took the left and the right, positive and negative, yin and yang, and put it all together, and you're locked in, and you ain't ready to change. Mm. Mm. Take your hands apart. Remember your number. Any change? Take your watch off. Your watch is ticking, putting a pulse in your head. It's a pacemaker. I don't got a watch, but I'll take this off. Okay, whatever, whatever you got, got in that hand. It was plastic, right? You ready? He's one of these tough cats. You know <laughs> yeah, oh, your headphone. There we go. Why don't you just come on over here? Come on up here. Solomon enters the chat. One of them chat. young warriors, you know what I'm saying? No, stand up, man. Don't sit stand down. Stand up, brother. You know what I'm saying? I grab my fist. Put your feet together. Right? Be as strong as an ox. You ready? Be strong. Okay? You're off balance, right? The man's got a lot of power. Gold water. Hmm. This is a little more than gold water, bro. You are gold. You ready? Yeah. Grab my fist. You ready? Mm -hmm. Be strong. All right, there you go. You, yeah. you seen that though? That was real. On my mama's, that was real. The first time you got me off balance a little bit, but that time I was, I was you stuck. locked in. Yeah. 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 yeah, young one. It may be hope for you yet. Maybe hope for you yet. Sol that's Solomon right there. I got a question for you. What does your cabinet look like? What is it that you're taking into your routine that's keeping you high level? If it's not our products, then whose products are you taking? And if it's no products, then that's a problem. Y'all seen our commercials for Goldwater, right? You've seen it all over high level conversations. You come to the show, you grab your bottle, people give us the best testimonials on the planet, and we got people on the go. The thing about Goldwater is, it's not our only product. We have products like the vitamin C moss. We don't naturally produce vitamin C, so we gotta get it in other forms. So therefore, especially during winter time, we are able to keep that immune system functioning high. And let's say if you just want pure moss, this is just pure moss. I'm talking about the superfood, the best on the planet. And not just from anywhere, because you never know when people actually getting their moss from. I ain't never seen them take a trip to Jamaica. See, we get ours tested. 
right? To make sure that you're getting the highest quality, pure version of it, and you're getting those minerals in an over-chemicalized world. We got Smart Moss Gold, right? That Smart Moss Gold is like a Viagra for the brain. You ever find yourself where your brain feels like it's low? You tap one of these and your brain gonna feel high level. Yeah, and women love a sapiosexual, so when those brains are popping and those ideals are running, you stay tapped in. You gotta make sure you stay safe out here. It's all sort of viruses and diseases that's running around this world, especially during this time. If you're traveling, make sure you spray this on the orifices throughout your body to kill any of those viruses or any of those things trying to invade you. So make sure y'all tap into goldwater.com so next time somebody asks you, what's keeping you high level? What's keeping you young and healthy and wealthy feeling? And now we can take some of that credit for it over here at goldwater.com. Make sure you keep your health journey running. It's a marathon. Peace. So, basically, we are all vortices of energy. Let me explain to uh, uh, what a vortice means to the people. Energy is moving through us all. You know, we're all a part of a torus of energy. Mm -hmm. Energy is spinning, coming out the top of us, spinning, coming out of the, like the bottom of us, like an apple. It looks yes, like sir. an apple. The same energy is coming out of the top of the earth, going back into the earth. Mm -hmm. We are a vortex or like a tornado of energy existing all the time, whether we're positive, negative, it doesn't make any difference. That energy has a natural flow. But when we start thinking and feeling outside of our natural selves, we disrupt the natural flow. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden that natural vortex begins to wobble. It's off. It's like a storm. It's like in Wizard of Oz yeah. when all that stuff was in the tornado, the lady riding the bike and all that stuff. It was drama in her spirit. You see what I'm saying? So what happens is, is when you clean up your vortex, and you find yourself, you find your center, and you become the center, the energy begins to change because you're the commander. You are the genie. Mm -hmm. You're the generator of your energy. Nobody can truly take it from you. You have to give it away. Mm -hmm. Now, your mindset may have been programmed by parasites, which are people or entities that take energy, but you have to give it. Spiritual parasites. They're spiritual parasites, energetic parasites, cosmic parasites. There's the physical parasites, which most people have. There's a parasite called toxoplasma, which almost everybody has. Mm. Toxoplasma comes from cats. Well, what's, what do you mean? Well, the cat, how, how does the cat just, you know, what you ever see rats just walk up to the cat and the cat just eat them? Mm. How come the rat ain't being a rat? Because the cats play and, and, and the rats play in cat poo poo and cat pee. Mm. They're attracted to it. It's a sexual thing. And when they, when they, and in that, in that, 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 that litter box is toxoplasma. Get your litter, kitty litter on the bottom of the bag. It says that kitty litter is going to have toxoplasma in it. When a woman is pregnant, they tell her she cannot be around cats because mm. the baby's brain won't develop because toxoplasma travels to the entity, warm blooded entities to their brain. Mm. And it lives in the amygdala. The amygdala is the part of your brain that balances whether something is good or helpful or destructive, what you know, anger, fear, all your emotions are processed through the amygdala or the amygdala because there's two of them. When the toxoplasma moves into your amygdala, it changes your perception of things. Mm. You're afraid of things that didn't even happen yet. You worried about it. didn't even happen. You scared. Mm. I think when I go down there, they go, they ain't, you ain't even there yet. Cat lovers ain't gonna like this. Well, I don't, you know, it's, 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 it's cat lovers. And see, this is only in domesticated cats. Who had the most cats? Egypt. Mm. And this is a theory. I don't want to make y'all upset. This is Dr. B's own theory. Come on with it. We want to hear it. Why did the folks, the Ptolemies and them just walk in and take over? This is the strongest, most powerful people in the world. Because they began to make cats. They domesticated cats. The cats have a parasite that came to the planet 6,000 years ago when some things were all over the planet 6,000 years ago, these things popped up from space. You know, in the Marvel movie, they show the aliens scared of the cat, but they ain't show why at first. And Samuel Jackson had the cat and the aliens seen the cat. I'm talking about these big, powerful aliens. And they seen the cat and they got scared to death and started running. And Samuel was like, what the hell are they afraid of this damn cat? And then one time in the movie, they showed this cat open up and turn to this big ass monster and just eat like five of them at once. Toxoplasma. Please look it up. <laughs> yes, it's like a big monster controlling society. Yeah. 
most people have it. That's the way they're able to control most of the people. So I said, but wait a minute. I don't have no cat, but you've been getting animals from the domesticated farm. But how does the how does that transfer over as a parasite to get into a human being? Because the cats live at the those feedlots. There's rats mm-hmm. at the feedlot. No, but, but I'm saying it to the human. Like I'm you about holding, to give it to you. Holding it. Okay, go ahead, brother. There are cats and rats at the feedlot. Yes, sir. The cats are pooping on the ground. Mm-hmm. The pigs, chickens, and cows, or whatever, are eating off the ground. They eat the parasite too. Now, the farmer told me they're good for our business. This is toxoplasma because it keeps the animals domesticated. They won't run away. They wouldn't. If you got toxoplasma, you will not. You'll talk crazy about the enemy. You mad. You upset, but you ain't gonna do nothing. They ain't gonna get out here like you and do something. You see what I'm saying? I could tell you don't have toxoplasma because you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. Most people do what they do and they're in fear and they live in fear and they're infuriated and they become what? What? In, you know, become like they have an inferiority complex. They're you know, afraid. Like cats or rat. You see? So what I'm saying is, is that gets in people through the domesticated food. So most people have toxoplasma. So, so the they cats are in people houses spreading the toxoplasma that then get into the food from the environment. That they eat because you I see how it gets into other animals because they'd be eating, you know, the leftovers that the cat leaving behind the poop, as you say, and getting into the food. But the human being, then that means that they would have a have to have an unsanitary station. And then somehow those parasites are getting into the food that they eat around the cat. The animals are being grown in an unsanitary station. If they're domesticated and they got a hood over them, and they ain't getting natural sunlight. They're being raised in a domestic Cation place. They're crossbred. What about cows, dog chickens, pigs? They're all crossbred, unnatural animals. Oh, I'm talking about house cats, though. So yeah, but the house cat. What I'm saying is the parasites started off in only domesticated cats. Mm. They say the beings that brought them here put them in cats. The cats have them, and they are laying drones. They say toxoplasma is like an alien drone. So the cats are aliens. No. The beings that use the cats, that placed it in cats. It's not in lions. It ain't in tigers. It's only in domesticated cats. Domesticated cats are everywhere. They got a thousand cats for every person. But what I'm saying is it got to the feedlots and it got to some of the farms because the cats are there pooping. And the animals eat it. They will not run away. Man, you've seen the farm man where the, 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 the fence them fell and the cows are still sitting there just eating. They ain't even run away. Mm. Chickens won't even leave the farm. Where they going? You ain't never been driving in the car and see a field full of natural chickens. You might see some wild turkeys and some pheasants. You might see a buffalo. You're not going to see a dairy cow. But do wild, I mean, do, do certain animals only have a certain radius that they travel regardless, though? That's true. Right? But I'm trying to tell you, if you was in a farm and you're being, you know, do, you know you're being subjugated. Yeah. People living, people are well, living on the Well, I mean, the, the ghetto farm. is the farm in that, in that yes. particular analogy and sense for surely that you're domesticated. There's, there's some men who would never travel the world, right? Because their imagination is stuck in one particular environment. So they can't see themselves outside of that environment. You have to see yourself somewhere before you go. You don't hop on a plane blindfolded. You imagine what the trip is going to be like, what it's going to be like getting into the hotel, what it's going to be like when you start walking around, you start looking at pictures, right? You you mind travel before you physically travel. Now you are. Right? So most people in the hood don't mind travel. They don't travel in their thoughts and go to different places. They get stuck in this place. So that's what people consider to have dreams because that dream state is a different dimension is when you in your mind. So when we say when we have dreams, we literally talking about tapping into a different dimension, yes. whether we're daydreaming or we're night dreaming. Right. And so being able to tap into that. And this is why it's important to spread the idea of dreaming in the hood. Talked about this with Dave Dash, my bro, Keenan and, and, and Rams was like, you know, the first shirt that I ever sold that went viral was called Black Dreams Matter. <laughs> and it was at a time when they had Black Lives Matter going everywhere. And I just thought that Black Lives Matter was it was a redundant slogan, 
right? Because it didn't mean anything. You just, you just like telling me air matters. It's like, yeah, I know, but I don't breathe, I die, right? <laughs> Black people, original people, of course we matter. Like, so I didn't, I didn't want to go out. Why would I make that a chant? It's not a chant that brings anything into a reality. It doesn't attract anything. It's just redundant. It says, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. And it's like, okay. Right. Instead, black dreams matter. Right. And for that to matter, it has to matter while we live in. Right. Not now when we did, people go out there and get invigorated about the life that was versus the appreciation of the life that is. Yes. This dream matter. This is a young God that taps into a whole nother state. This is humanizing human beings. This is a person that matters. You understand me? So if I say Palestinian dreams matter, well, in order for their dream to matter, your life has to matter. Well, what is your dream? Now you're getting deeper into the root of who that person is and their yes. humanity, which is the connecting factor of all people. America was sold as the greatest dream state on the planet, the American dream. Right. We were taught that you can come here and foster imagination and it can be brought out to the highest existence that you can go from a janitor to a president. Right. It is the playground of the planet Earth. It's the dream state. Right. So when we see it as no longer this playground, but it was specifically, you know, throughout the ages had been, you know, uh, at some point in periods of time, been a Caucasian playground. Right. But we had it. We've always been here. The American dream doesn't speak on a white person. Right. America doesn't mean white. And a lot of times our mind is so stuck into the fabrication of what they tell us words mean and the connotation connected to that meaning versus the reality of it is. North America, South America, America, a landmass, right? America doesn't even have a negative connotation. It's neutral. If anything, it has more positive. But when we can't even connect to the power that's here to say, I have, Amer I have American power. What does that mean for uh, a melanated man in America to truly believe that? A lot of times when people believe that you actually do sometimes see them have upward progress, right? Because they're tapping into the power grid that they're on. But when you are in denial of the power grid that you're on, you're disconnecting yourself from it to say, I don't want to tap into that plug. And it's like, bro, you, the plug is how you play. You know what I'm saying? Are you going to tap into American power and you hear it? No, you have to proclaim that I got American power. Yes. I'm an American God. Yeah, this is why I'm different than anybody on the planet Earth. This is why I can do what I do, or right? I can go across the planet Earth. I'm not going to say I'm an African God. I'm not, right? I study the African gods. I know of them, right? But I'm an American God. So when I go over there, I greet, hey, I'm American God, you African God. What's up? Let's make heaven. You know what I'm saying? This ain't Mount Olympus. No, we got our own Mount. Them ain't the white gods up there. Them, them the gods, real gods, the original gods, the OGs. So it's like, Everybody has to learn to tap into that. If, if you don't do that, you're not living. I don't care what you consider yourself to be. But what people get sold is the results of dreaming instead of dreaming process. Right. So you want to be a rapper. Why? Because you've seen somebody dream and make their dream come true. Yes. Right. So let's 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 go and talk about your dream, not the results of your dream. Let's talk about the process. What does it mean to protect the dream? What does it mean to respect the dream? What does it mean to foster it? What does it mean to develop? Everything you do, you should stop, especially if you do anything successful. As we talked about being a scientist, a scientist has always have to, you know, write down their results in a process, because if they don't, then they may not be able to recreate that. You can get a cure to something. But if you don't write down how exactly how much percentage of this ingredient went into this. No, now it can't be recreated. So what we have to learn to do all throughout life, anytime you do something good, Write down your process, the exact thing, right? So now you can go back and recreate those results and those become systems. Those systems allow you to truly tap into the power because you can take like what we look at our ancestors. We are in awe of the magic, right? Other people seeing the magic and say, how can I bottle that and recreate that and use it at all times? Oh, that was magical. Y'all created a, a kingdom. What was y'all framework? How did y'all do this? You start asking questions. If you if you don't have an inquisitive mindset, you are not equipped to be a, a, um, a creator. You're not equipped to be a master. You have to come in and be like, yo, what's I was I was with my bro Damon's first thing he did. We start touring around the building at the uh, 1500 Academy. He asked, how much this costs? How much is that? But that goes back to the child. The child asks how, why, where, what? Now you're filling your mind yes. up. With the ability to do that, which you now know from you, your inquiring. Yes. So 
we have to question, 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 question. The moment that you get stuck and you get rigid and you stop asking questions is because you've accepted whatever that is. Right. I told you this color was red and it could be orange. You didn't ask why you call it red. No. And we don't leave a space open enough. Most people don't do that. They, they leave it in their head. You have to say it out loud. You say something, you see something that's weird, say it. Not only it benefits you from not suppressing the part of yourself, right, and who you naturally are, it also helps that person to hear it. They may need to hear it question. You did not tell me this was whack music. But if you would have told me, you gave me a gift. You kept it in your head and told somebody else. You didn't tell the exact person that it could have helped. Why? Because you feel like you was going to hurt my feelings. No, forget the feelings. I want to make something great. You know what I'm saying? But you also got to tell me your why. If you don't tell me your why, you're not giving me a gift. You tell me this is whack, but why? Oh, because I think you got too many tones over here, or you curse too much, or you said this too much, or you didn't add enough space in there. Okay, I can respect the why. Now I can go in there and be like, does that make sense to me based on what I'm trying to do? Because success is reaching a, a, a goal. So I was trying to make people emotional. You said, well, this song too emotional. Oh, actually, you not you dislike it for the very reason that it's successful. Because I was trying to be emotional with it. So if I listen to somebody like Rod Wave and I'll be like, well, I ain't trying to listen to an emotional song. But I know a percentage of people that listen to music, particularly to tap into the emotions. Yeah. That means that I'm not liking it for the exact reason it's successful. Yeah. So you have to, when, when you criticize somebody, always tell them the why. Otherwise, you're not truly giving them a gift. See, when we tap into our God power, we're tapping into our original selves. And for that, we may need to be alone. Mm. When you are asking other people for their opinion, that may take you out. That could you, Sometimes, oh, this is really good. They saying it ain't really good. I just didn't want to hurt your feelings. People <laughs> be doing yeah. voodoo and you do and who do on you. Yeah. You have to do something you really love. You love it. You see? When you truly love something, it is yours and you have, you don't care whether anybody is. I don't care if anybody, I'm not trying to sell. Like I have a lot of music on my website. I'm not trying to sell it. If you'd like it, go enjoy it. I got products. I'm a manufacturer of products. I have products that nobody else has on this planet. Mm. I have creations and herbs. I've been an herbalist for 40 something years. A lot of herbalists out there actually came through my school. I taught. People said, well, you know, such and such and stole your idea. I know I gave it to them. Mm -hmm. well, why would you give them your idea? I'll teach you how to make every one of my products. Why? Because I would like to empower you. And first of all, you can't never make me so you don't have me in the product. Right. I'm unique. There's not another Dr. B series nowhere on the planet. I can tell you that. And if he is, I need to hire him as a clone because sometimes I can send mm -hmm. him out to do some work. What I'm saying is when you've tapped into you, your Eunice, mm -hmm. you see, you become in unison. You are now tonifying. You, you know, you got first, you got to atone. Yeah. Atonement is a deep thing, bro. You need to look at what you may have done. What may have happened, who you may have hurt, and you have to be able to say, yes, I'm atoning for that. I'm tuning up to the atone. I'm becoming in alignment with myself, letting the past go. I am not perfect. No one is perfect here. You see, it is that imperfection that makes each one of us very powerful. That is the godness. Mm -hmm. that, is the, that is the God power that we all have. And to be that and to be prideful and say, this is what I love. This is what I am about. My, the Dr. B expression, the 19 keys expression is unique. Mm -hmm. And when we come together like this, we don't have to ever agree. All we have to do is say our why is to help other folks have an experience that they can use. The world is in a beautiful place. We're going through a huge transformation all over the planet. People are seeing things now they never saw before. Mm -hmm. People are hearing things they never heard before. This interview is going to change people all over the world. Because we came together eye to eye in love. What? In the arc. We're arcing. Energy, like nerves, the energy arcs from one nerve to the next. Electricity arcs. An arc is a section of a spiral. This is true spirituality. Mm -hmm. What? 
spirituality is spirituality, which means that it's a spiral, which is a golden mean, is always changing and growing and expanding. A spiral is the only shape that can touch everything. Mm, I'm about to add on to that. Because as you talk about spirituality, if this if spiritual economy, right? In order for a person to have a great spiritual economy, words matter. Because when we talk about it, and it's two points that you can take from this, right? In order to get to your zenith, right? In order to get to your peak, in order to be at your high level, it's a, it's a simple way that you have to spend time. Right. If you look at a clock, we talk about spending time. You're talking about energy going in circle. Right. It's creating energy. But when you're talking about economy, if I'm spending time, you have to spend time alone. Right. <laughs> when you spend time alone. Yes. Right. You're giving to yourself. Yes. Right. And then when you're doing that, you are buying yourself. Somebody said, go buy yourself. Right. What does that mean? Go give to yourself. Spend time with you. Yes. Mind the nuggets from you. You're going to get a loan from yourself, right? Uh, and then once you do that, then you can give to society. But if you don't spend time with self, if you are not by, if you don't buy yourself, right? If you are not getting uh, that alone time, right? Where you're giving to yourself, then you will be spiritually depleted. You will have nothing to give to the world. So if you want to enrich yourself spiritually, go buy yourself. And. There's a difference between spending time and spinning time. Spend time. Spend time. Spend time. Musically, I spend time. Mm. When I make products, you know, I, I, so I have this herbal line, right? And a lot of folks say, well, Dr. B, you know, I bought one of your products, but it tastes different than it did last time. I said, well, well it, they always taste different. They said, well, why does it taste different? Because I never make the same product exactly the same. Neither does the universe. Mm. I am now making a product based on the vibration, the flow of the cosmos, the harmony, the frequency of the universe at this time. I'm creating equality. I'm creating a, a vibration. You see what I'm saying? When we are in that space at this time, allowing what has changed to go to move through us, that's like jazz. It never changes. Improvisation. So my products are not a product. They're changing. I'm reading the energy. I won't make a product if I'm feeling a certain way. Sometimes I go through stuff. I don't, I can't make stuff for, for three months. It's out of stock. People, when you go make it, Dr. B, I'm not making it because of you. Mm. I make products that can help the people first. Day. I make them for me. I never wanted to sell products. I, I was forced to do this. Mm. People said, Dr. B, you have to tell your story. How you went from hip hop to natural health? Because I had hip hop and all that music, the music, not hip hop, but the music industry took me out mentally, physically, and spiritually. I died. I had to die on the cross and resurrect myself. Yes, I had to go into the cave. I had to find a kinesthetic, auditory, and visual experience. Mm. I had to be by myself, with myself, for myself, in total darkness to create a brand new me. I had to let go. And I had to stop asking people what they think. Stop asking for other people's opinions. I don't care. Mm. Here, take the product. You like it? Oh, yeah. oh this is good. Man, but I think you ought to. Well, that's not what my expression is. We're always trying to make other people happy. You're always trying to, you know, they start telling me, well, you know, we got to give the people what they want, Dr. B. <laughs> what do you mean? What do they want? They've been told what they want. Yeah. I'm not going to give the people what they want. Every record that I did has some, some frequencies in it that are on a spiritual level, even if they was hardcore rappers. It was some stuff. You listen to any of the music that I worked with, DJ Quick, all that stuff that I produced, you listen to it. And you're going to be like, oh, what's happening in here? I'm putting freak. I was doing that back then. That's all I know how to do because I was taught not to play percussion as a for, for dance. I was taught the spiritual energy of percussion language. The drums I play are conga drums. It's about language. I'm it's a language thing I'm expressing. And this is a fifth chakra time. We got to tune up our language. We got to speak right now. People say something. Folks' feelings is all hurt. Because they mm -hmm. said something. What happened to sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Mm. You crying and you about to shut me down. You know what I'm saying? Because I said something. That shows how weak people are being programmed to be. But there's some people that don't care. You can't hurt me anymore. What was that? Uh, living color, mm. handyman. They used to beat him up and everything. But, you know, he, he couldn't hurt him. When you get to the point where you can't hurt me, I'm not trying to make you happy. I am here to do something that makes a sound, that makes a rhythm, that can help help the people that would like it. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make you follow me. If you're down with it, let's go. If you're not down with it, it's cool. It's all right. Mm. You're not going to make me do anything. I'm living a life of, you know, of beauty and love and creativity riding here. I was like, wow, I haven't been in this part of town in a long time. Mm -hmm. Every time I have come to this part of town, something huge happened. I was like, oh, this is Arcadia. I was like, oh, my God. Because I was having these flashbacks. I was like, this is about to be huge. Mm. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. Somebody sent me something about what we are going to talk about. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But what it is, <laughs> you know, I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know what yeah. you're about to say. Yeah. I don't know you. All I know is the man be trying to get my light half the time. He wants my light. Last time I saw him, he's trying to get my light. <laughs> he's trying to share the light. You got, y'all gave it to you. Now you can, you can get them now. You can, you want to buy them. That's a whole thing or sell them, but I'm not trying to sell them to you. Here's yeah, the sorry, bottom line. I understand. It's about love. You see this? I created an instrument. I was just about to ask drum. about that now. I looked at the singing bowls and I realized that the real ones are made of seven metals. Mm. Seven meta L's. Meta L's are living creatures. There's living creatures, metals, crystals. They're all living, conscious creatures. Just because they ain't talking to you, because you ain't saying nothing. The trees is talking. You ain't, you can't communicate with the tree. Trees all communicate with each other. The mycelium network, you want to know God. The mycelium network is omnipresent. It's everywhere mm. at every moment, everywhere in space, everywhere there is. Mycelium is. So you, you want to say, that's God to me. You be on a shroom? If I be on them, mm. I am a shroom. 65% mm. of my DNA is shrimp mushroom. Show us mm. yours. We came here as yeah. shrooms. Surely. <laughs> Some of us are still high <laughs> off the shroom. We can't come down. You know what I'm saying? We on a trip. Uh, but surely, yeah. But, and I should say, music is my background for everything mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying and i communicate better through music than i do anything else mm. so i created this instrument based on the seven bowls i mean the seven metals and in this paint is crystals it's ground up powdered crystals in the paint mm. so you see these instruments all over what's that bowl called what's it called yes yeah, this is a medicine drum medicine drum now the these instruments are not called medicine drum my creation is called the medicine drum. Mm. That is something I created. Yes, sir. Like medicine music. 20 years ago, I coined the thing called medicine music. It's being used now. It's all right. But this, based on the frequencies that it puts out, based on the time that it's in, and based on this, it's like a geometrical shape. It puts out this energy that changes you at your root. Mm. Okay? So I'm going to play something. Please do. And, you know, and, 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 and if you will... Speak on the time you spent with Mother Tanetta, um, because you know she she always talked about the music, color, medicine theory. Yes, you know what I mean, and that connection between music, color, and medicine. You know, I had this project called Urban Shaman, mm. which was the first medicine music project done in two thousand, year two thousand, and somebody gave it to Mother Tanetta. Mother Tanetta came to a lecture I did in Los Angeles. It was really interesting because they came backstage and they says, oh, Dr. B, it was like a thousand people in, this, in the audience, right? And I said, Dr. B, uh, you know, can, can we take the first two rows for, for, uh, for, Mother, for, uh, for Mother Muhammad? I says, I don't know. I ain't involved with security. That's only y'all. Y'all would whatever. I said, okay. Then I happened to look from backstage out in the front. I saw the brothers. I saw the sisters in white. Mm -hmm. I was like, it's the nation. Mother, who is that? My woman at the time, she was deep into Mother Tynetta. It's all she was into was Mother Tynetta, Mother, because she was from the nation. And she said, one day Mother Tynetta is going to come see you. She had this dream state. She said, everything's going to change. This was the day Mother Tynetta came. Mm. Mother Tynetta sat right up front. And I did my talk and I was nervous because I was like, I told my, my homeboy, I said, I don't know what I'm talking about. And Mother Tynetta said, I'm nervous. He says, you're going to get out there and do Dr. B. Just be Dr. B. So I got out there, man, and I'm talking, and Mother Tynetta's listening, and she's laughing at certain points because I have stories and stuff, and yeah. voices. Then it got dark. I say, I know they're about to leave now. They didn't leave. So it's, it's dark. They got to be out. Yeah. No. She stayed till it was late. Mm. And afterwards, she says, Dr. B, 
I, what you're what you're saying is very interesting. I love the way you talk about parasites and the subconscious mind and mathematics. Uh, I would like to work with you. And so how? She said, I understand you do this music, this uh, this cosmic type music. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a, a, a project called Taha, which is the story of Moses based on the Quran. It's a play, and I'm going to have musicians from all over the world, mm. and I'd like you to be part of it and create what's called the harmonic grid. Mm -hmm. I says, really? She says, that thing that you do is you're creating harmony in the cosmos. I'd like you to come and be the director and the musical director for the whole percussion. I was like, wow. So we did that, and it changed everything for me because I met so many beautiful people, and I was able to connect and do what I, what I really came here to do but for a large audience of people who were ready for change. So that time was beautiful. I learned a lot from Mother Tanetta and, you know, we talk on the phone at times and her energy and that coffee. Mm -hmm. You had the coffee? No, sir. Mother Tanetta, had, Mother Tanetta had this coffee. It was off the chain. I forgot the name of the coffee, but this was like ceremonial coffee from down in Mexico. Mm, yeah. I'm going to have to give me some now. Yeah, somebody still got it probably. <laughs> But what I'd love to do is I'd love to play some tones. Yes, sir. And uh, the space is create yours. a little medicine. All right. And, and, you know, let's see how this moves. So the instrument is tuned to 400 and 432 hertz. Yes, sir. And puts out the frequency of love and opens up the heart chakra, the root chakra, and the pineal. I'm gonna play a rhythm that's a six eight rhythm. Okay. It's not a four four. Six eight rhythm opens up the kundalini mm. and helps the flow between your pineal and your root chakra. Mm. got a rhyme oh you want to try to get the flowing come on brother yeah okay what we talking about then yeah uh high level operations high level conversations mathematical mind i use it as a weapon to change the vibrations the state of decaying to bring them back to life. Everything I do is right, like an L shape of love. From the bottom to above, emotions not within, emotions how I ascend. To the ladder that I climb, to reach to the highest heights. From the hell to the divine, look at how I change time. From the weathers and the seasons, giving man woman's reasons. Giving logic to your thoughts, like to hootie when you talked. People want to be smooth, but don't know how to flow. Too much friction in your moves. Gotta stay in motion. Keep coasting like West. 
throw it up for the dubs. People talk, but it means nothing. If you ain't out here running, put it all up in motion. Don't pause, put it all in play. Go work like every day. I got a lot of things I can say. Hell, we gon' make it. Don't they know I'm straight from the bay? Yeah, hyphenate all my hyphy moves. They can talk a lot, but they ain't in the grooves. I can see the plot of the devil moves, but I promise you that he gonna lose. Free him from Chicago to Chicago. Free him from Chicago to Chicago. Free him from the Chicago to Chicago. And the Gaza too. As I'm making these rules, and I'm making these moves, and I'm changing the matrix, and I'm making it cool, and I know that they're hating, and I know that they're waiting. I've been working for God while you over time over here working for Satan. You know that it's different. You a patient, got no patience. I flow with the rhythm. I keep time waiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say something. I tricked you. Trick me. I got oh, you out boy. of four four, and you just wrapped in six eight. Mm. I don't know anybody who raps in six eight. If it's happening, I haven't heard it. You just changed everything because you created a figure eight instead of one two three four one two three four. That was one two three four five six one two three. See the extra arc one mm. two, and you dropped in on that, bro. Congratulations, man. Appreciate I, it. I've never done it like that. I've never even experienced it. Yeah, no, it. I ain't never did no I live you, man. flow freestyle during the high level conversations, but I told you I'm in flow, no friction. Man, it's beautiful. Yes, it's elevation sir. time. It's time to rise. Yeah. This is high level desk, not tiny desk. <laughs> Y'all tap in. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Appreciate it. Listen, family, this has been a high level conversation and a high level vibration with 19 Keys and the serious Dr. B series. Can I say thank one thing? You. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank you very much for having me. And I'd like you all to go to elevationtime.com. That's our website, elevationtime.com. We have music, we have products, we have classes, we have workshops. We're helping people help themselves. Elevationtime.com and high level vibrations is all we need. Yes, sir. The highest level, the zenith is still happening within us. Yes, sir. We are lovers. We need to make love out of the things that are not love. Mm. Thank you very much. Travel light, my brother. Stay cosmic. I'm 19 Keys, and this is high level conversation. Tap in with the dog. Language is your liberator or your lockdown. How you use words matter. They materialize. The flow that you use, the tone that you use, the frequency, the cadence is creating something. It is traveling through space and time all the way to the other side of the universes and back. So your tone, the way you deliver is right. You're giving birth to your ideas, your ideals. I learned because when I was young as a musician, I couldn't speak out of my mouth. It was only music. I would stutter. I had what they call dyslexia. Everything looks backwards. The world looks crazy to me. But I learned that if I had a character, I could become that character and it was no longer me. So then that person merged with the me who I used to know. And I became the storyteller, the, the energetic person that was taking the drum and using my voice as a drum, as an instrument, as a saxophone, as a flute, as a piano. I worked uh, with, with people who were stutterers and I could help a person stop stuttering instantly. Guess how we did it. I would tell them to talk. And they would talk and they would stutter and they could hear their own voice and their subconscious was afraid of their own voice. So they stuttered. I say, change your voice. And they said, what do you mean? Speak like this, like James Earl Jones. Tell the same story. And they would start laughing and speak and not stutter. Or I'd say, speak really high. Use a high voice like this. And they would start laughing and they wouldn't stutter. James Earl Jones is a stutterer. He was on Oprah. He broke it down. He uses that Darth Vader, that big, strong voice. And the subconscious disconnects you from the new you. So I use language as a messenger, as a drum to help people feel something rather than causing them to think something, feel it. Feeling trumps thinking. Your gut trumps your mind and your heart is your earth. That is your space. And you're projecting who you are to the world. So use tone, use frequency and do it with love. Um, doctor is a is a frequency 
of necessity, right? We experience the same thing over and over and over. The internet has no new life to it, right? You go scroll down your timeline. It's the same thing as last week and the week before, maybe in a different particular makeup or in a different color and a different headline, but it's the same thing. When I think about Dr. Be Serious, man, I think about a new frequency, right? I, I, I it's a, It's a new energy to tap into and that's what we need right we need more people that are animated we need people alive people that can speak we need people with some stage presence in the theater of life right but also with knowledge and details storytellers keepers of time keepers of wisdom that share and give that sharpen the tools that we have because they animate us they make us more alive right give us reason purpose rhyme and put spin on the time that we live and so he has a lot of knowledge that we didn't even get to tap into, right? When we're talking about the God power, we're talking about the neuralistics, we talk about the dope God stars, the subconscious, the mind, body, all of these different things, man, he can go into different pockets and dimensions, I promise. He can do a whole docu-series. These are one of the ancestors that you have to tap into, right? If you go and you imagine 12 gods, right? 12 gods with different frequencies and have different specialties, right? Each God is not the same. Otherwise, there will be no point. Otherwise, there would just be one. Now, in the sense that I believe in one God, but I'm saying God, so I'm talking about us, us as people, or us as scientists, right? There's a, a scientist that does biology. There's a scientist, you know, that does naturopathic medicine. There's a scientist, you know, that studies dolphins, right? There's a scientist that does this. If there was just one scientist that did one thing, right, then the other fields would not be covered. So what we're doing with these conversations is finding the scientists around the world so that we can cover all fields so that people can have that exposure and they can be animated with the knowledge to be able to live it out. So I'm extremely grateful and I'm extremely thankful not only to my access right to these elders and then being able to have a platform to broadcast that messaging and that access to you all. So now we can skip some of the steps of the process and democratize access to the God. Peace, family. If you want to see us at the highest level, if you want to see us at the top of the podcast charts, <laughs> this is the way you can help, not just with your views and your attention. First of all, I want to thank you for being here, listening, watching, sharing, but we also need you to comment. This is how support looks like. I need you to comment the best thing you liked about the episode or the worst thing. It's up to you, whatever you would like to share. Then I need you to go and put in the five stars. Go to Apple's, go to Spotify's, go everywhere. And I need to see them testimonials. And I need you to go on Apple and Spotify and download and subscribe. The more downloads we get, the better we able to do a business. And the more we can grow this high level media. Again, I want to thank you all for supporting. Thank you all for tapping in. If you want to book, the booking email is 19keys at 19keys.com. Tap in. You know, I've traveled to London, Toronto, Ghana, right, Egypt, you know, um, all kind of different places around the world. We've sold out shows, theaters, some of the biggest places in the world. And a lot of people love to see the clips of our results. But I'm going to tell you where the biggest jewels and keys are is in the process. And the process is not always shown, but it is on Keys TV, right? The behind the scenes, the fights, the arguments, the masterminds, right? The places that we go to, the people that we talk to, the thoughts that will never get into the editing room and just be shown on social media. We decided to give you unfiltered access unlocking the vault so you can tap into keys tv 
episodes like 19 Minutes, new original shows that you've never seen, being able to see the full, and even being able to work with original talent and curate some of that good content that is at the highest level because the way we do things is different than everybody. That's why they follow our pattern. And on Keys TV, all you got to do is tap into the movement and the revolution will be televised. Peace family, it's 19 Keys. This is 19 Minutes. When you focus on creating, the experience that you have of making money is going to be automatically dialed into that. Not in excuses, because I don't live with excuses. I live with decisions. We're so fixated on the attention and not where the value actually is. Is that the success is not in completion. The success is in the execution. When I saw that, it turned me up to another level as far as what I'm able to know that I can accomplish. If they take my deal away right now, I know I'll find another way to get money. Yeah. Cause it's just the hustle in me, but. I feel like I'm always in that mode, bro. No matter what I'm doing, I'm taking something in. This doesn't mean we have to agree. It doesn't mean any of that, but we're sharing the truth. That it's not your responsibility to stop triggering people. It's their responsibility to heal. My ancestral part is you do for your people. But they can understand rare human beings that build out all of their complexity and live around their gifts, skills, and talents.